and we are live what's going on everybody happy wednesday it is the last wednesday of july it is it is wild we are almost in august how's everybody doing uh nice is here let's see lewis is here lisa's here dutch is here jack black in the house um i saw viking was here a moment ago pf dennis red five lsc is tuning in how's everybody doing Hi, Louis. Uh, he said from Portugal. That's where Nice was just at. Well, I've got um, an exciting update for some streaming stuff today. Uh, after last week's stream, I finally set something up and wanting to set up for a while. So we've got our front camera. We've got our side camera. Hi, everybody. But now we have also got an overhead camera. Um, I... <laughs> Uh, this is something I've been wanting to set up for a long time. I've had this camera just sitting in my closet. It's a great camera. Um, the biggest delay was I wasn't sure how I wanted to mount this. I didn't initially want to drill into the ceiling. So I was looking at options for sort of like these, um, I don't know what they're called, like compression poles that you can go from one wall to the other and they just sort of have a spring. Uh, kind of like how I think your shower, like the shower rod works in a shower for the curtain. Um, but I saw mixed things about it. I saw some people saying that they're not, like, they're kind of sketchy, they're not really good at holding weight, um, and I didn't want it to fall on me. And then the other ones I saw that said they were really strong uh, said that they could actually damage the drywall. And since we're renting, I was like, I don't really want to do that. So what I ended up doing is, I can show you guys actually, um, let me tilt you up really quick. I did end up drilling, uh, doing the splits. Um, I did end up drilling. This is the same mount that I was using when I was using this as a webcam. It's just now instead of horizontal, it's vertical. So it's a couple screws uh, and drywall anchors, but um, yeah, I'm we're, we're here for at least another five-ish months. And so I, I, I didn't want to wait any longer and um, I did get that installed. So I'm really happy with it. Uh, just looking forward to having a different angle. Uh, there's been quite a few times where I'm building something that's like, way up here and I just can't get a good view of it. And so uh, with this as well, it's got built in uh, zoom so I can really zoom out if there's something big that I'm working on. And if I'm trying to show you guys something small that I'm working on, we can also zoom in. Um, luckily I'm fairly tall so I can reach this, this little toggle. But yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, wait, you're moving again. No, not now. So we have a lease, our lease is locked in. It, 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 blah, blah, blah. Our, our one year in this house uh, was on June 6th, and we signed a six month with them, uh, which is through December 6th. So we're at least here through then. Um, we really want to purchase a house, and we maybe found something, but it just really depends. Uh, I, I don't want to say too much until I know more, because right now it really just depends on uh, numbers and like cost. Everything is so, so expensive right now. Uh, but the reality is we don't know how long it's going to take for the prices to come down. And I don't know how much longer we want to, uh, just sit on the sidelines. So we'll see. Uh, is that, is that back? Is that a P1S? Yes, this is a P1S. Um, this case, oh, that's not the right camera. This is the right camera. Yeah. So that is a P1S. Uh, I will be doing a video on it at some point here. I'm right now doing, I've been doing some printing on it already. Um, it just cranked out the the parts that we're going to need for the uh, linear rails to align them as well as the pulley jig on there. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, there's been already quite a bit of content on it. It's basically the P1P upgraded to nearly X1 carbon, but without the LiDAR, um, without the LiDAR, without the touchscreen, without the chamber thermistor. Uh, and it's got plastic panels instead of the aluminum, uh, but yeah, it's nice. I mean, it's it's really nice. So uh, I'll, I'll have a video on it along with some other stuff at some point, but it's it'll be at least a month out from now. Um, did you buy something else now? <laughs> Update on the VZ delivery. Uh, which cameras do I run currently? So uh, all Sony now. Uh, this is Sony FX30. This is the primary camera I got. Um, this is what I shoot all of my videos in, A-roll, B-roll, everything. Uh, this right here on the side is a Sony a6400. This was my primary YouTube camera for the three years prior to it. Um, and then the camera up top is the Sony ZV-1 that I bought um, a year and a half ago for a secondary stream camera before I had the FX30. So um, 
The ZV-1 is just a point and shoot camera, so it doesn't have swappable lenses, but it's got great picture and the compactness makes it really nice for uh, just a streaming camera you can throw up somewhere. Hey, Ted's here. Hey, Thomas. Um, uh, gosh, one second. I'm backing up. I missed chat real quick. We're going to get, we're going to build the Trident in a second here. Um, is, is it better than a normal Voron 2.4? It's so different. I, I don't know that I can really compare a bamboo printer to a Voron printer. I mean, I could certainly try, but not now. It's a very like long argument with it. And a lot of it depends on what's important to you. Uh, update on the VZ delivery. All right. I don't know if Steve's here, but I'm just gonna say it. The VZ bot is here. It, as of like three hours ago, I got a text on my phone from FedEx uh, that I didn't see when it came in and it said there was a package delivered. I walked out front and the VZ kit was here. So uh, we are making some very good progress. I need to talk to Steve. We're going to chat uh, tonight and this weekend. And so hopefully very soon, I will have a hard date for when we're gonna be starting the uh, VZ bot 235 stream. So yeah, it's here. I haven't opened it. Yeah, um, me and Steve are gonna do that, but I, yeah, super, super excited on that. Um, make RS, if I didn't say hi, welcome. Uh, good morning from Japan. I help uh, rep for Cyborg here, built four out of these Trident so far in 2023, loving their purple. Ooh, exciting stuff. So really quick, I'm, I'm not gonna get caught up on chat. I don't think I'll actually be able to because of how long my tangents are. So we are building, this is part two of our Cyborg Trident build. Uh, last week, we spent the entire time building this frame, but I'm quite happy with where we got and sort of just the alignment of everything using clamps and one, two, three blocks. Um, I did reach out to Cyborg after the stream with some feedback that everyone gave me. And one of the things that I had mentioned was that there were a lot, not a lot, but there are a few people that were thinking it was strange that purple was the only color option. And I said, yeah, I tend to agree. Like, I think the purple is awesome, but not everybody is going to want purple. So having a neutral color would make more sense. Well, they already listened to my feedback and just about instantly swapped over. So now you have the option to go with a purple or a black frame. They don't have the picture for it yet, but you can get this kit in black now. Uh, on top of that, there was a few people that had mentioned that they would like to potentially get one of these kits, uh, but they didn't need or want the printed parts. So there is an option now to get without any of the ABS parts, which takes off like $50 or something like that. Um, I think the price may have slightly gone up. Maybe it was $20 from last week. Um, and I don't exactly know why. I do know that Cyborg also told me they were swapping out some of the parts from what's in my kit to Big Tree Tech, as well as a few other things moving forward. And that might slightly, uh, that would likely have a slight effect on price. And so maybe that's that, but I have to figure it out. I can ask, I, they responded to me a couple days ago and I've been so busy and behind on messages. I haven't gotten a chance to reply, but at least the good news is again, they have been just like with the V0, taking the feedback I give them and implementing it way quicker than expected. So now purple is not the only option on their website. You can again, go with black if you, uh, want to do a different color scheme and you don't have to get the printed parts if you're more than wanting to print your own ABS parts. Um, let's see, what else am I missing? Um, do, 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 do. Uh, with all the cases I have to print, I went through one kilogram of Polymaker Polyterra PLA in less than three days. Wow. Hey, Natty's in the house. Uh, also, they're working on a 250 option. Sick. Okay, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Um, Cyborg, you can now choose a black frame. VZ... Uh, VZ all wheel drive. So I believe nice that it's, it's going to be all wheel drive, uh, but not water cooled. I don't think it's water cooled. So, um, yeah. Okay. Is that everything? I think that's most of the things. Hey TT. Um, I, I probably missed someone. I'm sorry. Again, it's, it's, <laughs> it's so difficult. Cyborg seems to be very responsive to your feedback, which is great to see. Yeah. I, I mentioned that in my review. Um, if you didn't see it, turtle, we have a new camera overhead view. So now when I'm leaning forward, you can really see the back of my head and usually it's sticking up right here, but not today. Um, yeah, so I mentioned that in my review of the uh, Cyborg V0.2 kit that I all I pretty much always provide manufacturers with feedback. I mean, the review is essentially my take on their product and the things I like and the things I think can be improved. And there are plenty of times where I go beyond that and I'll email, hey, these are the things that I think would really make this like an extra step up over its current, um, you know, over how it currently stands. And there's a lot of times where I either don't get responses, um, I get a thank you and nothing happens. Uh, hey, Tony Novak, thank you very much for becoming a member. 
Uh, Matthew, nine months. Thank you for nine months. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of times, most of the time I get no feedback or just a thank you or the common phrase is I'll tell the engineers or something like that, which I'm like, great, I won't hear back ever. So it does matter a lot to me that a company is taking the feedback and actually doing something with it because it feels like, you know, again, my, my feedback, and it's not even just my feedback, like that feedback wasn't my feedback. I gave that feedback because it's what you, you were all saying last week. And so I said, Hey, this is what, this is what people are saying they want. So yeah, but it's nice. Um, it's really nice. Uh, that's going to be a great camera angle. Um, LDO or Cyborg, it really depends. Um, the LDO kits are awesome. There's no denying it, but they're also at a premium. So, you know, I mentioned with the V0.2, if you're going to be, uh, Hey Matt, thank you for the gifted membership. Uh, Rafa, you got the gifted membership. Um, I mentioned with the V0.2 that if you're planning on upgrading a few things on it, then it really doesn't make sense to go with the LDO kit. If you're going to be swapping things already, you might as well save the money, go with the Cyborg kit, get really what you want, and then again, swap the few things you don't want and still save money. So it just depends. If you're happy with the specifics of like the LDO kit config, then it's a great kit. There's absolutely nothing wrong with going that route. If you know you're going to be doing some modding and tweaking things, or again, you just don't want to spend that amount of money on a kit. So far, the Cyborg kit 0.2 and what we've seen of the um, this kit have been great. There was, there we had one issue last week. I do want to just restate that. Um, there were on two of the, uh, on two of the bolt holes on the long um, corner extrusions, there was still some metal left over from where they punched or drilled out. Uh, <laughs> PF, thank you very much for 13 months. Uh, you're getting old. We're all getting old. Hey, Nizo. Uh, Thomas, 12 months, one year. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm brain farting. I was talking about. Yes. So the corner, there was a couple of spots where they had punched out the holes, but the metal hadn't been fully ejected. I didn't see that until I was trying to bolt things together and couldn't figure out why my bolt wasn't going through or why the frame was kinking. So I did also mention that feedback to them and they said that that would be something they would start to double, triple check. Um, wasn't, it really wasn't a huge deal, but it was an annoyance. There was a point where, I mean, I don't know how I'd have to go back and see. We spent at least half an hour trying to figure out why the frame wasn't staying flat. Although I was, uh, clamping it down. And again, it was because there was a thin piece of aluminum that had gotten inside of there and was wedging itself. So that's what's going on. I feel like I've, um, I wish LDO would organize the hardware better for the cost. Yeah, that is, I mentioned that this is one of my, uh, maybe not one of my favorites, but it's a huge perk for these kits is that they all come already screw organized with nice labels. Uh, for someone like me, that's got too many projects going on at once. This is, is really nice for keeping track of things. So, um, we're almost 15 minutes in. I, Hey, Steve's in the house. Uh, everyone say hi, Steve. I told, um, N nice asked if, uh, there was any updates on the VZ bot kit. And I did say that, uh, there, there may have been a VZ bot kit showing up today. That was at my front door and that we're hopefully going to have some more information for everybody regarding a hard date, uh, soonish when we're going to be starting. So uh, cyber kit. Hey, thank 14 months. Thank you. Nice. Uh, cyber kits are nice depending on what you want. Yeah. It, it's like options are awesome. You've got to weigh what's important to you is price important is, um, having like, is there certain mods or upgrades that, that are worth more to you than others? Like it's not really a right or wrong. It just comes down to, again, your, your own personal, um, situation and what's important to you. Cause what's important to one person might not be a big deal to someone else. And we see that all the time. So I got a huge order today. Uh, who ordered today? I have to print 100 plus barrel bands for local store with cells era. Oh wow, cool. Uh, uh, Dan and Steve are hard dating soon. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's get going here on this um, on this build. So today we are going to be continuing with the. Or we're going to be starting on the AB motors and the idlers. I think I pulled out pretty much most all of what we're going to be needing here. Let's see. Yes. Cool. So yeah, AB, AB drive and the idlers. And the only things I've done so far is I did install the heat insert. So that's not the camera I wanted. This is the camera I wanted. Um, let me boop, jog this. So there were only, if I remember correctly, three heat inserts. And so, oops, 
Can I figure out? It's gonna take me a minute to figure out how I need to hold things up. So we've got, that's not right. <laughs> we've got the one on the bottom. Uh, uh, PF, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships. Uh, let's see, TT got one, Dutch got one, uh, Jose got one, Jack Black got one, and Stuart did. Thank you. Yes, uh, I, I, I spent a little bit of time this morning because it was looking, one, it would be really nice if I mounted a light on the ceiling to, to help this camera out. Um, but I did figure out a way to adjust one of the settings from the exposure value it was on to just let it do its automatic thing. And it made things a little bit brighter, which is nice. So all I've done so far is that heat insert and then the two heat inserts on these accent pieces, which are just on, I keep going to the wrong camera. <laughs> it's gonna take, I don't have the muscle memory yet um, on the top here. So we've got this, man, having it up top is so, so nice. Uh, I see something else missing though. I know, I know what you're talking about, Steve. Uh, and I noticed before going live too that I didn't update it. So it, it'll it'll be here for next week. But I didn't get a chance to swap out the uh, what you're talking about. What I think you're talking about. Uh, hex tray we've got. No, no, no. Hex tray. That's we've we've got the hex tray here. So we do have that. So the first thing I'm going to do, which is something I forgot on the 2.4, is to install these M5 nuts into these accent pieces. Uh, let's see, we've got nuts right here. Yeah, there was um, there was a little bit of a panic before today's stream. I was prepping things and then realized I didn't have, um, Del Mar had reminded me to print out some of these, um, some of these little, um, oh gosh, the linear rail jigs or whatever to hold them centered on the extrusions. And I thought that I would kept them from the 2.4 build but I went out in the garage and just checking all the leftover printed parts and I couldn't find it. Um, so I had to get that printed. And then, one second, let me move you guys. Are we on autofocus? We are. Uh, so that happened. And then the internet went out, uh, which I don't know why that happened, but luckily it seems like we're back and things are good. But yeah, it was kind of a, a little bit of a mess this morning. Hextray could use a mag mat on the bottom. Oh, that would be really cool. I had a magnetic mat that came with my wow stick that I don't think made the move that would have been really nice. Okay, so yeah, just this this time I forgot uh, to install these M5 nuts in the 2.4 and when we got to the part that needed them, it was kind of annoying. Um, so we're gonna install these, although they don't, they're not a very tight fit, at least with the um, printed parts from this kit. I don't remember if they're normally tighter than this. So um, although they're in here, I'm gonna try to remember to check uh, when I actually go to install these so that they don't fall out, but we'll at least attempt to place them. Yeah, we'll place them upright so they don't fall. We got you and you. There we go. Walmart two bucks. Yeah, I print four each in case I lose two. I print, oh, on the, um, yeah. I usually do print extras. I, I don't know why I didn't today. There's just a lot, a lot going on. Um, I do remember though, so for this one, we're going to be using the M5 by 40 socket head and it's only a placeholder to help us align our uh, bearing stack. And last time I remember we struggled, I say we, it's a collaborative thing, but I was the one struggling, but we watched me struggle. Um, and I ended up figuring out that if I compress the printed parts with my one hand, when I slide out that uh, assembly aid, it should keep everything in place. So hopefully this will go a little bit quicker than uh, on the 2.4 so let me make sure i got the correct parts here yes all right so we'll take our bolt go through the bottom and then we need our shims let's see shims are going to be let's put you back in here there we go uh some with experience on starlink i haven't i haven't used it i might know oops oh no I don't know if I'll find that. That was a, let's see if I can see it really quickly here. It was an M3 washer. Luckily the washers aren't, like they're just washers and not precision shims. So worst case scenario, I'm sure I've got a handful. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it. The carpet has, the carpet has claimed it's uh it's offering. So put this back and these are our shims. I also overkill by using four jigs per rail, but that's me. <laughs> Howdy ho, fellow printer people. Hey, monkey. This feels, this feels thick. I thought these are supposed to be... Huh, I'm gonna really quickly just check the thickness on these shims. They're supposed to be one mil 
I'm pretty sure, but they feel thicker than that. Um, let's see. Oh, no, they're, I mean, 1.02. Oh, one, yeah, no, they're spot on. It's weird, they feel, they feel thicker than the shims I used previously, but. Okay, so we've got shim. Yeah, I guess it's just me. Uh, shim going on there, and then we need our bearing stacks. <clears throat> I did pick up, uh, I'm not going to use my teeth, this isn't working. I did pick up after last week the um, measuring tape that Delmar recommended that has uh, both millimeters on one side and inches on the other. So we've got that. Because I've been, using, I've been using my, what is it, um, 600 millimeter long ruler and it wasn't quite long enough. Um, so I should probably have that. And I also ordered, I think it was uh, Ted that was talking about the Gorilla Glue that Steve recommends. So I did pick up some Gorilla Glue that'll be here today. Um, I, sh I don't know why it's taken me so long to order some different glue um, when the amount of accidents I've ha that I've had happen, normally we use this stuff um, from Mercury Adhesives. And it is just the, run I mean, look at the side. It is the runniest stuff ever. And I like it because I never have issues with the lid bonding to it, um, which has always been an issue with me in super glue. But boy, like half the time it ends up all over my hands, which is like entertaining, I'm sure, <laughs> but not a whole lot of fun for me. Okay, so we've got the bottom piece. Now we need the top piece for this, which looks like it's just a mirrored piece like this. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got our top piece. Okay, so yeah, this is the spot where we need another M540. So let's, okay, let's set this down for a second here. Uh, Gorilla Glue is great for magnets. Yeah, which Gorilla? I think I went with just the, um, I think it was just called standard or original, the original Gorilla Glue is what it's called. So I know there's a bunch of different types. It was just the, uh, whatever the normal stuff is. Yeah, because the, uh, yeah, Ted was using it for magnets and it's, I've destroyed, I destroyed the, uh, one of the Nevermores that I was installing in the 2.4 uh, because when I went to install the magnets, it, it just ran down the printed part and super glue on ABS, like, or really anything, it just turns white and it looks, it looks bad. So, uh, do you have a Steam affiliate link when you jump on the tool selling train? I, I don't, but I probably should. I probably should. Uh, still not in the fridge, put it in a Ziploc in the fridge. Yeah, I will, I will do that for the, um, the Gorilla Glue stuff, the Gorilla Glue when it comes in. This stuff I haven't needed. It's been probably a year that I've been using it without issue, but yes, I will do that with the Gorilla Glue. Okay, so, interesting, our, okay, so I'm looking here and based off the orientation, the, uh, the uh, M5 nut that we put in this is absolutely gonna fall out for at least a second. So I'm just gonna release it and then make sure I'm grabbing the right part here. So let's see, orientation should be like this. Okay, so I think we're good. We're going to slide out the one that we put in initially uh, and I'm applying pressure. So I'm like squeezing these two halves together. Last time I did that, it made it where none of the shims or the bearings inside moved around. So let's see if we can get lucky this time. That looks like that works. We're dropping that out. Uh, and we're taking, oh, crap. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, which direction? Yes. So we're taking this accent piece and sliding. Nope, this isn't right. We're taking our accent piece. Yes, sliding it over the top. Still squeezing the whole time to try to keep everything in place. Okay, still squeezing. And then we're taking another M540 from the other direction while still squeezing. <laughs> and hopefully, yeah, there we go. So it's it's a piece of cake. Uh, 
it's a piece of cake as long as you apply apply that pressure. So now that we've got that, I'm going to hold things in place, but we'll we'll get this nut that popped out, put it back into its slot, and then I will begin to tighten this. I think I need a four. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, that's really the trick is just to apply. And I don't think I want to tighten this too tight because we want this to be able to slide because this is our tensioning mechanism. So I've just got it. I guess I'll tighten it here more, but. It's probably too much. Yeah, that's probably good. Um, uh, you can hit super glue with heat and the white goes away. Oh, nice. Okay, I didn't realize that. I, I do use um, I do use a hot air one wand or heat gun usually when I remove a brim from ABS because where you break the brim off, it almost always leaves a white line. So I do use it for that. I wasn't aware that it also worked for super glue. So um, I forgot how slow the MK4 was without the beta input shaping, but it had a lot of ringing. Nice tip. Uh, okay, I got that to fix my boots. Uh, baking soda and super glue makes it instant instant harden though oh yeah it acts as a uh like a curing agent right hey what's up uh mr that's right i'll go with rick b8 rick <laughs> mr rick hey sebastian's in the house okay so this is cool we've got this and the last thing we need to do for this one is grab an m340 and an m3 washer let's try not to drop any more of them okay we're gonna need two so put you there i said m340 And this is going M3 through our screw. And this, so this is our tensioning mechanism. So this is going through, through here, where the Voron logo is, and then into our um, heat insert. And then we'll just leave it loose for now. So that way, once we get the belts on later, we can, we can tension it. So we got one down. Uh, want to update my video sell to Fiber or Starlink in Europe. Uh, fiber will be available. Ooh, nice. Uh, correct, but you can buy also an activator spray, which then keeps super glue stay clean. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, in the garage for the CNC machine, I purchased super glue with an activator. Uh, the stuff smells horrid. It's awful smelling, and I'm sure not great to be breathing in, but it, it does work really well. Usually, if I'm, um, or when, not usually, I don't do it often enough, but when I've been adhering the stock material down to the wasteboard, I'll use blue painter's tape and then put a little bit of um, super glue on one side of the tape and then hit the other tape um, like from the whatever I'm trying to hold down with the activator. And then when I press the two together, they they bond uh, almost instantly. Okay, we got that M540 and three washer and we're just going to be rinsing and repeating. Uh, but this time we're going with the, let's see, you. All right, so yeah, same exact thing. Uh, take in the other half piece which looks like why does it look like the orientation is wrong huh did i goof did i goof did i goof or is the picture mirrored I'm not sure. The picture looks mirrored in, in this. Um, if this is the shorter one. Okay, so on this side they used the one on bottom that goes that way. It's weird, the picture doesn't look right for what I'm doing here. Nope, I'm I'm just looking at it wrong. Never mind. Ignore, ignore me. Um, okay, so continuing on, we've got our M540 again. This is going to be just used as a um, alignment, and then we will do the same thing. So shim bearing with flange facing towards the shim, bearing with the flange facing the other direction, and one of these shims on top. Then we'll take the other half of this and drop it on top like we did a moment ago. 
cool. All right, so now <clears throat> we're gonna do basically the exact same thing, but opposite. So and grab another one of these screws. Uh, with the fiber, I don't need to spend 20 euros on material. Yeah, they just installed fiber in this neighborhood not long ago, but I've been well, I've been relatively happy with the. Um, who do we have here? It's not Starlight. Starlight, I think, is what they're called. Uh, cable, and it's been it's been pretty good. It's it's gone out a couple of times, but usually it's scheduled. Uh, there was one time it wasn't, but it wasn't a huge deal. Uh, compared to what we had in our little condo in California, I don't know if you guys remember, but there was a period of time where I think I had like four or five weeks worth of internet issues. It was an absolute nightmare. Um, I saw a thing that says oil causes the white frost stuff from stuff to form from CA glue fumes. It mentions it in the context of skin oils. Anyone else heard of this? I, I haven't heard of that, but I, I maybe... Okay, so we're gonna grab our other. Okay, so back to squeezing the part. That slid right out. Yeah, it's still fine. Um, then we want to slide this in place, take bolt. Hold on a second. Did I screw up? No, it still looks like it's aligned. I think my fingers are just in the way. Okay, I think I might have screwed it up. No, I got it. Uh, one second. Yes, <laughs> yes, awesome. Okay. Anyone that saw the 2.4 build knows that I struggled way more um, with getting these bearing stacks in place before I discovered the squeeze. <laughs> so I'm, I'm quite happy, quite happy with this. Two for two, yeah. <laughs> counting my counting my stars today. Okay, so same thing. I'm not gonna over tighten this long bolt because we want this to slide relatively freely. And then we will grab another one of these M340s and the other M3 washer we left out. And we will do the same thing. Feed this through the little hole in the side here and then just tighten it to the point where it's at the edge of the, um, the tensioner. So right when you see it pop, you can't really see that I guess, but right when, let's try this. Overhead. Oop. Maybe. Nope, wrong way. There we go. So right when you start to see the screw popping out the end there, that's plenty tight because we're gonna we're gonna be tensioning this later on. So we've got both of them done for now and we can just put them off to the side. Two for two, stream is over. Yeah, I gotta call it today. Uh, I also had trouble with the stack. Yeah, if you if you <laughs> if you go back to the 2.4 stream and you watch me attempt the first one, um I was trying to remove the bolt and just balance it, right? I wasn't applying any pressure. I don't remember how many times it took me, but it was a few. Um, and then also a similar concept when I was doing the Mercury 1.1 bearing stack. Um, no, no, it wasn't the bearing stack. It was trying to get one of the pulleys. Um, I think it was trying to get one of the pulleys on top of a um, on top of a shim, and there was like no wiggle room to. It, it just there was no space for any slack. So it was me like juggling and wiggling things around. We, we've had fun. We've, we've definitely had fun. I just got tracking from my V02. So excited to get building. Nice. Congratulations. Fiber cost monthly will be 55, uh, 50, between 55 and 75 euros per month, depending on the provider. That sounds like a really good deal. We're paying, I want to say we pay $100 a month for a cable here. It's, there's like I pay one step above the bottom one to get a little bit faster download and upload speeds but there's even more but man the price goes up really quick and I'm like I don't think we need all of that uh, that much bandwidth so all right we are good with that and we are moving on to oh uh, once such yeah we can check our work let's do that I think we're good but just to make sure the orientation is correct so got a call. It could be from the mortgage person. I uh, 
finished submit some stuff and I was waiting to hear back. Okay, so all we are checking is to make sure that our bolt head is on the top. We've got a bearing stack and we've got the screw on this side. So I don't, I don't, I don't really know how you could screw this part up uh, other than possibly, okay, the thing I could see is you could possibly flip this part uh, and have bolt head on the wrong side and the bottom of it on the other side. Um, but that's really, that's probably the main thing I could see getting messed up here. And then for this other one, uh, let's flip this like this. So we've got bolts on top or screw on top M3 right there and our bearing stack. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So I'm going to move back here. Sweet, we are moving on to our A drive. So let's see, we need M530s. Let me put this back in place, try to keep things organized. Take the M530s out. It says to grab the piece that has the cutout. Awesome, so we've got this piece. So it's the piece that has, I think only one so far has it, or the only one has a heat insert. So the piece that we install the heat insert into with the cutout facing towards you, we're gonna place that down and then install two M530s. Looks like one here and one here. Just leave it at an angle for right now. Uh, I paid 300 DKK for Gigabyte Inner 40. Wow, that is a phenomenal price. Uh, one 4K TV makes it easy to go over one turbo. Oh, gotcha, yeah, if you stream in 4K. We, I guess we do have technically a TV that can do 4K, but it's like, it was a pretty inexpensive TCL that I bought when we first moved out like four years ago, but it's been great. Uh, through firmware updates, it is really, really slow and it'll occasionally reset. <laughs> or like sometimes if it's been on for a long time, you're like, yeah, we need to reset you. But overall for the price, I can't complain. It's been fine, but we, we don't watch anything in 4K on it. Um, okay, so we're doing just more more of these stacks now. So for this side, we've got shim, bearing, bearing, shim, and then we've got the double stack on this side. So we will flip this over and I'll have the orientation. Definitely easiest to always have your orientation matching what's on screen. Um, there's been a few times where I've been like, oh, I can do it. And that's where I usually screw things up. All right, shim. Bearing, bearing, shim. And then the other side, we've got the double stack. This one will be, shim. Let me turn it so you guys can see it maybe. Bearing, bearing, shim, shim. Bearing, bearing. What projects is everybody up to? Like what, either printer builds or um, any builds? I guess it doesn't have to be a printer build. What's, what projects is everyone working on? Uh, competition is very strong with five to 10 providers for almost everyone here in Denmark. Oh, nice, yeah. We don't, I don't think, we, I think we had two options when we moved in here. Uh, and now that there's fiber, there is a, another, an additional option. So yeah, the more options you have, um, the better. Absolutely, for competition. Okay, so again, we've got shim, bearing, bearing, shim, and then for this one, shim, bearing, bearing, two shims, bearing, bearing, shim. So just make sure you do that. I, I have, um, I remember seeing in the Voron Discord before I was building the V0, somebody having a bunch of issues, and it turned out that they're, they forgot a shim or something like that. So the belt was at like a one millimeter angle that was causing crazy amounts of wear and noise. Uh, so yes, a one millimeter shim makes a substantial difference for your motion. So definitely double check that. Uh, now we're gonna take the top piece of this and just drop it onto here. Um, it looks like, is it just like the... Hmm, I don't know if it's, it is just like... Yeah, so it is just like the 2.4 where the... No, did I grab the wrong? Hold on, I think I goofed. Something feels off. Yeah, I did goof. Okay, so the, uh, I guess there's two that have the same. 
So for the top piece, make sure you get the one with the cutout as well. And I guess what I was getting at is that the plastic part has threads we're going to be threading directly into. So that should line up like this. Yeah, and we're just going to hold this in place at an angle and then tighten it, but not overly tighten it since again, we're threading into plastic. Um, where, I think this is the right driver. Yeah. Maybe, there we go. Yeah, so for this, I'm just going to, going to tighten it, but again, just not over tighten it. And then I'll double check to make sure that everything is still spinning freely. So it's tight now, like I'm just going to two finger tighten it, not even use my whole hand to tighten it. And then verify that these are still spinning nice and freely. Yeah, everything everything seems great. Maybe just, maybe just a hair more, a hair more because it's me and I can't over tighten things a little bit. There we go. Uh, let's see. What is everyone working on? Uh, hello from Florida. Uh, I need to check what everyone's doing. One sec. Ask the questions. Uh, I'm currently printing articulating critters for my visiting nieces. Oh man, the articulating models are so fun. The I've mentioned it before, but uh, the neighbors have two boys. I think they're probably five and three-ish. I'm very bad at guessing kids' ages, but let's go with that. Um, and I have the articulating dragons. Uh, when we first moved in, I'd print out a couple and um, they, his father had come over when I was in the garage and I was talking to him for a bit and his kid was there and was like, what is that? And so I made, I gave him one and then had to make one for his brother and they ended up breaking them because kids. Um, and so I ended up making them two more and as well as a couple other articulating ones, like a shark, a crab that I found, and another thing. And they, they love them. Like, they're so fun. I mean, even for adults, like I, I've given, um, I think my dad one and uh, Aaron's dad has an iguana and one other uh, on his desk at work. <laughs> they're, they're a lot of fun. Uh, LDO V0.2 R1 gray and yellow Polymaker ASA. Nice. Oh yeah, you said you're doing your fourth, uh, your fourth build, right BBs? Your fourth V0? Got everything together for my Merc one build. Just need to print out the parts. Sweet. I am still <laughs> eagerly awaiting the beefy frame release. Uh, new building for the print farm is what we are working on right now. Foundation is done. Nice. What kind of building? Like, is it going to be a metal shop um, or like a metal workshop or is it constructed out of wood? Hey, Gary. Uh, I'm trying to print with a multicolor Snoopy for my wife. Nice. What are you using for the uh, multi-material setup? Is it an AMS or... Is it uh, a different MMU setup? I uh, only have five providers of fiber. I'm printing parts in cloud gray and yellow to do my V0.1. Uh, missing, I've been working on my K3. Ooh, nice, you finally got started. It's looking like a printer now, just ordered some half inch plate. Oh my God. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I'm working on starting an airsoft business that uses carbon fiber tubing and 3D printed parts. I'm currently making the website super cool. Um, when, I was, when I was working in sales at Matter Hackers, uh, there was a few customers I talked to that we're doing full-time airsoft printed parts and there definitely is a market for that. Uh, printed Fab 365 Mario and Luigi, fun. Um, about the con converting the Ender 5 to Mercury 1, I just installed the Bontech IDGA. Why don't I know what that is? Oh, integrated, right? In it's got the integrated gears into my Voron self printer and my wife has me printing kids party <laughs> Uh Building a... Uh, a racked trident tower, three trident modified mounting into 330. That sounds freaking sweet. I, if you're, are you in the Discord? Please tag me on pictures when you do that. Um, make sure all bearing stacks move smoothly after tightening. If um, it may come back when running in shape results. Okay. Uh, working on my 2.4, 250. Uh, I give Lexi frogs my ADHD students who need fidget toys. That's amazing. <laughs> Waiting on 180 micron kit. K3 printers are heavy using AMS to get X. Okay, nice. Uh, it's a full-size steel building with AAC blocks and concrete for the floorings on both levels. Super cool. Are you trying are you, are you trying to solar power the entire thing, Ellis, or no? Will it be partially um, like hooked up to mains? Uh, was a comparison, something like you tried it mash up. Um, sure, I'd be happy to, sweet. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a very cool, a very cool build. Let's see. Okay, next we are going to be installing the, uh, the motor. So we've got our motors out and I also, let's see. 
I think we're gonna need Threadlocker on these. I don't think that these Cyborg ones have Threadlocker pre-installed, but let's remove these set screws. That is not right. 2.5, let's double check. Yeah, these feel, these don't feel very tight. So we've got our Threadlocker out. So we actually get to use Threadlocker. Um, Let's see. Uh, let's see. GT20 set screw, the root of all issues. Insert both set screws and use thread locker on all set screws. Use a high quality hex driver to prevent the hex profile from stripping. Ball in drivers are not recommended. Okay. Uh, loose set screws account for the majority of issues. See the products application notes. Cool. All right. So, shouldn't be too difficult. I've got our little printed uh, guide so that way we set the height correctly. We don't really have to do any measurements. Uh, I do need to pour out some of this Loctite. Um, what can I put you in that won't make a huge mess? Mm -mm -mm. I always have something. Let's see, what's in my trash? <laughs> um, that looks like not a good idea. This'll work. I broke. Yeah. I was printing out one of these little foldable baskets and I heavy handed one of them and broke a piece. So there's a tiny little pocket right here that will be perfect to put a little bit of this into. And we can hopefully use that for the, uh, the rest of them as well. Are you using magnets for the suspending? What? The VAW, I don't, I don't know what that is. Uh, there is now, there's now a new mellow metal seal. I did see that. It doesn't look like a knockoff the Etsy, but don't know if it's original. Just letting you know, cause you're doing the CNC tap fade. I did see that kind of, um, somebody I follow and I can't remember his name and I feel bad, but, uh, it's just me. I'm like faces. Remember names I always forget. Um, but he got one in and I also saw mellow posted. It looks really nice. Um, are you putting tap in this build? Yes. Yes, we are. Um, we're starting with printed tap. We're going to use the hardware they provided, but we're not going to use the printed parts they provided because the printed parts they provided were from the original tap and I printed the R8 or whatever the latest is. Um, tap does not come with this kit. That's a completely separate thing that they had sent when I was building the 2.4. So I at least want to uh, let that be let that be known. Okay, let's pour a little bit of this into here. We don't need very much. And then we will take our screw roll it around get you nice and coated and shove this into here get our other screw okay did i not put this one in straight because you are not holy crap there we go all right, those are in. Uh, so next thing we're gonna do is check the orientation. So we want the teeth facing upwards on the post. And then we are going to drop this down and I'm just gonna tighten, I'm gonna tighten up one of these. So that way it can still slide up and down, but it can't slide left and right. Cause it'll be on the flat portion of the motor, motor shaft. So just like that. So now I can still move up and down, but if we turn, um, if we turn this, it's also turning the motor shaft. So we don't have to worry about alignment and for this it looks like we want the uh, a to go into the teeth so we'll go like this i'm gonna drop down drop down low make sure this is nice and straight and that looks about right to me so we will start to tighten this i might try to raise it a hair actually Cause there's a tiny, there's a tiny, oops. There is a tiny bit of space. That looks about right. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so I got one relatively tight. I'll tighten up the second one and then I'll tighten them even a little bit more. Luckily these aren't super small set screws. Um, so I don't have to feel that bad about giving them a little bit extra. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And then let's just verify. Uh, verify one more time again, the letter A. So E should be against the top and the letter A should be, uh, there we go. Yeah, that looks, that looks right to me. 
think. Roughly. Uh, you do a little adjustment after running. Oh, okay, cool. So, uh, did you print the dual magnet? If not, I highly recommend it. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, that's a great question, Phil. I, I really don't know. I printed whatever I saw on the GitHub and um, when we get there, I will definitely show it. Um, I can actually show it in a second. I, I think I posted a photo on Twitter. I, I, real, or I guess it's not Twitter anymore, is it? I posted a photo on, on what used to be Twitter. Um, I can show you guys really quick. I think Delmar knows what I printed. I don't know which piece you'll need to see. Um, here's part of it. Here's part of it. Is this, can you see based off this? Oops, oh, it's not really focusing. Why are we not focusing? There we go. I don't know if those are the pieces. You know, I would imagine that's probably where you would see that, but I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to show. So uh, the tune for magnet version is the same for the RCA. The bottom parts there does not. Okay, cool. So yeah, yeah. This is what this is what was included in the um, in the cyborg kit uh, for tap, which I was gonna swap out at least the red anyway, since this trident is black blue with purple frame um uh, it's my name um yeah i was gonna swap it out anyway but then i was told i think it was delmar last week that said that's the original version so i reprinted it out in polymaker asa uh, i want to build a vz all wheel drive 330 but once again it will spend if i go water cooled the water cooled's gorgeous i'm i may eventually water cool it because i've, I've always wanted ever since e3d had their little water cooling kit um I've wanted to water cool a printer, but I haven't. Um, I definitely won't be doing it for the build. We're gonna build it, um, Steven, Steven, you're gonna build it. Whatever comes in the kit, that's how we're doing it. But I, um, it would be fun because it's all so much CNC parts and um, like it, it could be rad for, for doing some crazy high temp fun stuff. Also, I just like doing stuff sometimes that isn't practical because <laughs> it's cool. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is make sure we have the orientation correct. So I'm going to uh, grab the part we put together and grab the motor that we just put. Um, we just put the idler on and I'm going to place them on top of each other. So it should be wires facing this direction towards opposite of the camera and then this dropping on like this, like that. And we're going to be using M330s. 330, where are you? Socket head, does it matter? Yeah, you can put in socket head. There we go. Fabrico website down if you look at the at a product. Oh, you're saying Fabrico, the website's down? Uh, the one you got included looks like R6. Okay. Yeah, I haven't followed, I really didn't look into TAP very much other than. Um, like I, I watched when when the Voron Live was, um, but because I just had V0s and a switch wire, which wasn't compatible, I, I never really dove too heavily into the different versions. Uh, also, it was in like beta for quite a long time, and I just know myself in that um, if I were to, like Stealth Burner as well, I waited to upgrade the afterburner on the switch wire until it was out of beta because I knew. I would just put it together and then want to take it apart to do the next version. Um, and, I, and I didn't want to go through that, so. Uh, check your work, compare your symbol, pay attention to the pulleys. Okay, so we are going to tighten this a decent amount. Let's go back and forth. Kind of tighten them together. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's make sure everything's still spinning good, freely. Yeah, everything seems good. And then at a quick glance, I know uh, Delmar said we'll be adjusting these, but just looking at a quick glance, I can see that this bearing stack looks like it's pretty dang closely aligned to the um, 
idler we installed, which as it should be, I mean, we used a jig, but it's not a bad idea to verify it. And I, I'm pretty sure the instructions will have us verify in just a moment. Oh, <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I didn't, I swear I didn't realize it was on the same page I was on, but yeah, right here, just, just double check that the side that has the double, um, oh yeah, it was the mortgage person that called me. Um, they text me right now. So I did, I did, I, <laughs> I'm squirreling right now. What I'm trying to say is the side that has a bearing stack, two of them on the same side, that's where your, um, the teeth of your idler should be. <laughs> Words, people. Okay. So now we are moving on to the other half and we're going to sort of rinse and repeat. Let's get the orientation correct. Um, awesome. And then we're going to use M530s, which I think we took out already. Uh, hey, what's up, uh, Ellie? Perfect side is up for me. Okay, if you have a four pin Molex Microfit, pigtails on those are nice. If you have four pin Molex Microfit connectors, pigtails on these are really nice. Oh, gotcha. I, I had to read that twice. You're saying basically how it is on the LDO kit, right? For the 2.4, where it's got the little connectors. I do, I do have Microfit um, connectors. I was just actually talking about Microfit on a video that I'm working on. Yeah, maybe I'll end up doing that then. Um, okay, and so on this side, one bolt's going in here, one bolt's going in here, and then we will do the same thing where we will flip this over. It might change the orientation if it's different on... Uh, it is different, so let's change it so that way it matches the picture for me. That looks right. Um, boy. Real quick rant. So you just scroll button on your stream uh, deck, the pop-up dog scroll gif on the stream. That would be funny. Um, that would be really funny. Maybe I can do, you know what? I think that I think that I need to add a emoji for members uh, or whatever they're called, emoji emoticon. Um, that's a squirrel. Cause that, that's, that's so appropriate. And I might look into that uh, either trying to make it myself or just commissioning one. Um, so quick rant, I had planned on doing a video on um, Can Bridge, Can Bridge, because I, um, so <laughs> Can Bus I know is something a lot of people are interested in. Some don't like it, some do like it, a lot do. The people that don't like it, it's more so because of the process currently that it takes that's sort of messy. Maybe that's an understatement, it's quite messy. And, and I did a video on regular old CAN bus um, for Clipper with a U2C and an EBB36 for the Mercury 1.1. And that video helped a lot of people, which was my goal. I uh, sort of, uh, what is it they say, grinded my teeth or uh, what's, the, what's the saying? When you sort of cut, cut my teeth, um, uh, going through the process, it was not fun. And when I finally figured it out, I took all the things that I did wrong and all the things that I did right and all the things I learned and try to compile them into a video that would help someone get from, maybe not A to Z, but like get the thing done with enough information and some warnings along the way. So the feedback on that video was awesome. And when I created that video, I knew I wanted to dive into Can Bridge, which for anyone that doesn't know, um, I, I don't wanna go too deep into this, but essentially some boards are capable of running Can Bridge, um, which is sort of them emulating a Can adapter. And so long story short, all it means is those boards don't require additional hardware to act as a CAN bus, um, to, to, to basically allow for CAN bus. They can do it themselves. They, they are the bridge. That's why it's called CAN bridge. But the process is slightly more complicated because you're, you're flashing uh, typically CAN boot onto your board and then you're flashing CAN bus onto your board and then you're flashing CAN boot onto your CAN bus tool head and then you're flashing Clipper. Anyways, it's, it's, um, it's a bit messy and it's slightly different on each board. The way you set things into DFU mode and the way you flash things, there's different commands depending on the board. So, uh, I'm getting, I'm getting to where I'm trying to go. I, I wanted to install that on the Voron 0.2, uh, from Cyborg because it uses a Fly Gemini V3, which is a great board, but it has CAN bus, uh, built into it. And it doesn't have a ton of fan connectors and I plan on doing some mods to it very soon here. And I would like to have some additional PWM controllable fan connectors. And by using 
the EBB CAN bus board, I would free up two additional ports plus more um, on, on that printer. So I spent a Saturday, I kid you not, probably six or seven hours going through doing the same thing at least four or five times just to make sure, but also trying everything I could find on the internet. And I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. I and it turns out the end the end result was it was just me. I didn't know, and Ted saved Ted told me this, and I had no idea. Um was that when you are flashing or so when you flashed CAN boot or you've got your CAN bus network up and you grab your UUID, which is essentially the like equivalent of a serial ID for your board, a unique identifier uh, that CAN bus needs to identify whatever boards or uh, yeah, whatever boards are on the CAN bus network. Um, once you get that UUID and you put it into your printer.cfg file, so Clipper has been able to grab it, it no longer shows up under your um, terminal when you SSH in. And I didn't know that. I guess I just, from when I've done CAN bus before, never needed to check my UUIDs again. But in this case I did, and I thought that something was going wrong and that the the CAN bus was like, like not working correctly or was falling off the network. Nope, it was just me not realizing that the serial, like with the serial, you can just do LS USB to serial devices. And then there's the command that will list out all of your serial IDs. It's not that way with Clipper or with, um, with um, CAN bus, you have to like put it back into CAN boot mode. So I'm, <laughs> I I got it working. Everything is done. I haven't installed the EBB like it's on the CAN bridge uh, network. I just need to. I'm swapping the tool head out, so I need to do that and put all that together. But boy, um, I'm going to be having a CAN bridge video. I feel pretty damn confident at this point in my CAN bridge. Uh, understanding and capabilities. So I'm really hoping to help some people out. I'm not going to be using the Fly Gemini V3 because I don't think it's as common as, the, as a configuration as something like a Big Tree Tech Octopus. So when I convert the 2.4 uh, and remove the cable chains and go CAN bus, I will make a video which will hopefully help people. So um, yes, rant over, but I, I needed the rant on that because I spent so many hours it, it, it was so, it was so frustrating. I, it was so so frustrating, and it ended up being just something incredibly silly. So, yeah, can bus. Let's see. What did I miss? You need a scroll button on your stream deck. Uh, pop up. Okay, that was turtle. We did do that. You can disconnect them while uh, thinking of you without backfeeding the voltage to the board. Yeah, that's a that is a great idea, Delmar. Um, make Oprah if you get every time the. <laughs> oh, that's right. The yeah, you get a spool of plumbing or filament. Uh, let's see. Use the tree rat from Ice Age. Oh God, I love the 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 Ice Age squirrel that's trying to chase his nut throughout everything wrong. Um, your micron guide on the Aaron Center Cambridge mode. Canvas is good. Documentation is still a poop. <laughs> yes, uh, I just converted my Trident to Canvas. I can be happier. Uh, one USB cable versus two, basically. One USB cable versus two. Wait, what do you mean? In regards to what, Delmar? Uh, oh, you're saying with U2C. Yeah. Maybe that's your time out. Any further UIDs go bye-bye um, from showing? Yeah. I didn't I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Uh, the other item, I'm at you, you must have a CAN device connected before the CAN network will show up. Gotcha. Um... Set up three now and I've had no issues using onboard can. Yeah, it, it um the UUID thing is really what got me because I saw it and I should have known. Like in hindsight, I should have known because through through mainsail or through I think I was running fluid, I think I switched over to mainsail. Um, but I was able to connect to the printer, so I should have known that it was working, although the UUID wasn't showing up. It was just very very confusing to me. And I saw nowhere in any documentation anywhere about UUIDs disappearing. And again, coming from having done maybe like 10 to 15 Clipper configs, playing around with them now, and only one being CanBridge or CanBoot before, like with serial IDs, they're always visible. So I just like, it's, it's a gap that's like, can be a very frustrating gap I've learned. Uh, CanBridge, only one USB from the Pi to the board. Oh yeah. Only one USB from Pi to the board, then can from there. Yeah, 
except on the, uh, it depends on the printer, I guess, right? Because the Fly Gemini has onboard USB since it's using a um, H616 chip. So it's got it built in. Uh, I've done Manta M8P, M5, and E3 Easy. Big Tree Tech Pi uh, with the can dot or board works good. I, I'm, I've got a video on the Big Tree Tech Pi coming out this weekend. Um, it does have onboard can, but you still need a USB, uh, you need a U2C board for it. It's a special U2C board. Quick last rant here, and then we're getting back to Trident, I promise. Um, Big Tree Tech Pi. Yeah, so um, it has, one second, is it? Um, so you've got a dedicated CAN port on, oh, come on. Can we not zoom? There we go. Okay, so there's a dedicated CAN port right here, but it doesn't actually come with CAN built in. Uh, you've got these two headers right here, and they have a special U2C board that enables, enables the CAN functionality, which is going to be, here it is. So this is the board. It's a tiny U2C board that has a USB-C connector, the boot button, so you can put it into um, DFU mode, and a small STM32 chip along with the 120 ohm resistor. So uh, it's similar to the, the standalone version, but again, it's smaller. It's got the two headers that plug into the board. Uh, the only downside of using this is because, again, it's U2C, it actually does uh, take the connection from one of the USB 2.0 ports. So it, it, although you're not losing footprint or you're not, yeah, you're not having to mount a separate board, you are still use, losing a USB 2.0 port, which is a little bit of a bummer. Yeah, it's a can hat. There you go. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> that's enough. That's enough ranting. Let's go back to what we we're doing. I just wanted to share. I mean, again, like some of the stuff makes it into videos on the main channel, but some of the other stuff behind it doesn't. So I feel like it's interesting um, and maybe helpful. Hopefully it's helpful. Someone tell me it's helpful. <laughs> All right, back to our bearing stacks. So this time the outer stack is a double stack. So we've got shim. Make sure it was just a single shim, just a thick shim. <clears throat> we've got bearing. Sure the flanges are in the right directions. Shim. Shim. Bearing stack, or bearing. All right, flange down, flange up. One more shim. And then on the other one, it's just a single stack. So it's going to be, oops. Shim, bearing, bearing, and shim. There we go. <clears throat> uh, the B2 has a bridge USB mode. Uh, B3 does away with it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, I haven't, you're talking about the Fly Gemini V2? I haven't used, uh, the V3 is my first experience with it. The test command only shows a UID when not claimed. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. I think I've seen that as, as a comment in the doc somewhere. If it is there, if it is there and you want to tag me in it, I'd like to see it. <laughs> Just so I can see where it is because I read through lots of different documentation sources and didn't see it. Um, I thought we were squirreling out, so that is normal. <laughs> You're right. You're not wrong. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing again, which is put the other half on top. Spin it around, holding it in place. And then um, again, we are going to be threading it directly into the plastic. Uh, go. How's your builds going, Luke? I can't remember. You finished your, um, you finished the Rook, right? The one you were working on? Oh, it's changing songs. Let's go to, uh... there we go. Okay, so hand tightening you, hand tightening you. 
And then just one more time verifying that things are spinning. Yeah, everything seems good here. Alrighty. Uh, 20 minutes and then we will open up our Polymaker giveaway as well. We have 82 viewers, nice, and six, uh, 52 likes. If you haven't hit the like button, please do. See if we can somehow pull a Hail Mary and get 100 likes before uh, we do the drawing uh, in 50 minutes here. All right, so I believe we're gonna be doing the other motor now. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. Um, let's get our, another one of these idlers. Hey, Tiago's in the house. How's it going, man? Happy Wednesday. And then we needed a two millimeter driver. Take out these set screws, dip them in our um, Loctite, and then we'll install them back again. Let's see. I'm still building my V-Core 3.1, two instances of missing parts so far. Oh, wow. Um, missing parts in the order? And also, what what parts? Like, uh, are we talking bolts or like substantial, like big, big parts? Uh, I did my part, you can too. Thank you, Steve. Our Loctite is soaking into our printed part. I think we still got enough though. Oops, no, no, we lost, we lost them. There we go. Ooh, also in Jack of the Week updates, uh, Jack is officially rolling. He's been trying to roll for two months. I'm gonna throw out this. Um, we're probably gonna need uh, more lock tight, but not today. And I, I just, if I leave lock tight on top of the surface, I will forget about it. And I will at some point shove my hand into it. It says, wouldn't be the first time. Um, but yeah, Jack's been trying to roll for um, probably two months now, I would say. And his biggest issue has been he gets to, he gets to one. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. I just threw my mouse at the wall. Um, the biggest issue is that he like would get to one side almost all the way over, but the arm that's like the arm that's on the ground, he didn't know what to do with it. And he couldn't figure out how to like thrust himself over it. And then um, I think it was two nights ago, we woke up in the morning and uh, Aaron checked the baby monitor and was like, oh my God, he's on his stomach. And so I ran in there, ran into his room and uh, checked on him and yeah, he was just like doing push-ups. Um, and so we weren't sure if it was just like a freak thing, like, oh, maybe he somehow did it against the side of his crib or, or something like that. But nope, um, from from two days ago, it is, it is a real struggle to keep that kid on his back. And so um, in the crib at night now, he's like flailing and then he gets onto his stomach and because he can't crawl, he doesn't really know what to do. He just gets pissed and starts sort of yelling um, and, and his arms and legs are like making their way outside of the crib because he's moving so much. So I ordered this like um, mesh uh, um, wall for his crib. So tonight we're gonna weave it through all of the posts of the crib to try to make it where he has to keep his hands and arms inside of his designated vehicle. So <laughs> Velcro him. <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> hey, what's up Major Gamer? Uh, the lead screw decouplers were missing in the main bag of, wow. So what was excellent? Okay, that's at least good to hear. Did you, who did you order from? Did you order, uh, I don't know where you're located. Did you order from Fabrico or did you order from RatRig directly? Is there a link for the drawing? The link will be posted in 15 minutes and it'll be in chat. Uh, right, Jack said really. <laughs> yeah, so it's been a, it's been a pretty adventurous week here. Alrighty, so uh, now we are going to get back into things, but I had to update everyone. I'm in Greece. Okay, cool. So you got it directly from Matt Rig. That's nice to know that their official support is also great because like Rico would definitely take care of you. Um, we are going to be placing this idler in the opposite direction, so teeth down, and then we'll do exactly what we just did, which is align it with the flat spot on the motor shaft and then tighten it so that way it can still slide up and down, but not slide um, round, so up and down, good. Turning, turns with the motor shaft. Uh, and for this one, we're gonna be using, again, our little printed jig, uh, but we're going to be using B. So B is the height we want it at. So I'm gonna get low again and 
do my best to align this. You can't really see what I'm doing, so let's see. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna tighten it a little bit more, but I want to quickly verify. Yeah, it's good enough. It's, I mean, it's slightly more towards one side, but there's some tolerances with the printer and I might be slightly angling it. And I, if, I don't know if we're also adjusting this one, but I imagine we might be later. So go ahead and tighten it a little bit more. So that way it's nice and snug. Here, Jack. Hey, what's up, G-Funny? Everyone say hi, G-Funny. Happy Wednesday. Uh, pro tip, don't weave the mesh wall on the crib. It goes around the corner post and the inside of the rest. That is a fantastic tip. Um, I probably would have followed the directions, but I think the image I saw on Amazon has it going back and forth, but that's a way better idea. Um, that way it's just mesh all the way. Uh, hola, is this a 350 or 300? It's a 300. Yeah, uh, 300 by 300 by 250. So the standard, I think the standard size. Johnny Jumper was fun for the toddlers. What is that? Uh, where's the link for the giveaway? It will be live in 14 minutes. It is not, it doesn't exist as of this point. Okay, so now we're going to make sure that our wires for the B drive are facing the left direction. And we're going to uh, also double check our orientation. So if this is where the motor is going through, um, the bolt should be, like these bolts should be facing away from you. There we go, words. And then we're also going to take uh, probably the same screws, which are M330 socket heads, which we've still got out. Ooh, check it out, G-Funny. Uh, we just, we got something new. Uh, da -da -da -da, overhead camera. <laughs> yeah, I could do this. There's, I just, I'm not used to using this. So there's gonna be times where I probably should just be like, hey, look it. But yeah, so from my point of view, these bolts should be facing the direction. Nice, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships. Uh, Nuno got one, Thiago got one, Kali, David, and Bjarn. Oh, thank you. We'll hit, we'll hit the uh, DJ air horn. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's insert these. Get these aligned up. Oops, oh God, what have we done? <laughs> There we go. All right, wires coming out that way, bolts coming out that way. We're still, okay. Let's go back to the side cam. I think it's a little easier to see maybe. Um, this is it right. We need 2.5. Five months, thank you very much, Gamer Geek. Uh, looks good, what camera is this? Uh, top camera is a ZV-1, side camera is an A6400. I, I quite literally got the ZV-1 because it's what Tom uh, Tom Sandlander had. When he was doing quite a bit of streaming, it was right around the time that I was getting into streaming about a year and a half ago. And I wanted a secondary camera that was better than the um, C920 webcam that I was using at the time. And uh, I saw that he had purchased like three of them. And uh, I think I got it for $100 off around Christmas of 2021 at this point. And it's been awesome. It's it's a point and shoot, so you can't change out the lenses, but it's just, it's real compact. It has nice crisp photo. Uh, and yeah, I've been, or image, I guess. And I've been really happy with it. Uh, I want to pair it with the exact trident you are building. Oh, sick. What colors, uh, what colors are you going with the ERCF? Uh, sorry, I'm mobile, so can't tag. No worries. Are you still at work? You, oh, you probably are, right? It's in West Coast or Pacific time, it's 120, so. Either you got a, either you got an early day or maybe you're at lunch. Uh, think a car seat that he can bounce in. Oh wow, I feel like that wouldn't fly. <laughs> They're really strict on uh, car seats. Uh, my kids all loved uh, those when they were little. Just started a five-hour ABS print on the P1S. Have not printed ABS on it yet, and I've never really printed ABS before. Yeah, let's see how it goes. I, I have a feeling it'll go great. As long as you don't have any oils on your hands. Um, that got onto your powder coated build plate. Uh, the bamboo printers print ABS like absolute champs. So um, the only issues I've ever had printing ABS was again, really dirty um, 
was really dirty PEI after we moved and it was just dust and crap. And then the other time was when I didn't set my build plate correctly in the slicer. If you set it to like cool plate or engineering plate, whichever the other one um, that'll work with ABS, it doesn't heat the bed up enough. It's, it does like 50 or 60 C instead of the 90 C I think it does for PEI. And so that, that time I had a failure because it just wasn't adhering since the PEI was only set to like, again, 50 or 60 C. But other than that, I, I mean, most old prints have been real consistent. Uh, I.e. wash your hands before handling flex plates. Yes. Uh, yup at lunch. Nice. What are you eating? <laughs> I think Aaron's going to make uh, quesadillas at some point during the stream. They were so handy when mom had to run to the kitchen. Uh, just moved into a new house. Ooh, exciting. You have to, I'll have to, you'll have to message me, uh, G-Funny. I'll have to message you and get updates on what you've been up to. Uh, purple, black, and gray. Nice. So are you trying to go with the purple frame trident then, you're saying? Uh, for sure, kid got freedom of movement, and so did parents. <laughs> oh, chicken teriyaki. Mmm, sounds great. Um, okay, and then the last thing we're going to do is, just like I said a moment ago, the side that has the uh, two stacks, so on this time, the stack here and stack here is on the bottom, should be aligned with the idler of the motor. And as we can see, the idler peeking out from the center there, we are, uh, we're good to go. So, AB idlers, uh, or AB drives are done. I think I said idler too. Yeah, anyways, you know what I mean. Oh, sweet! We're onto the y-axis. Dude, are we, I feel like we're killing it today. I feel like, I feel like considering I've gone off on a few tangents, we are doing really, really good. Purple Trident and purple ERCF, nice. That's awesome. Uh, I had chicken fajita quesadillas today for lunch. Ooh, that sounds good. I slowed down outer walls in the bamboo. Oh, you know what? I, I, I did, um, so I never had issues printing ABS as far as uh, functional, but when I was printing out, when I was printing out the front cover for the stealth burner, when we upgraded the switch wire, when I used the default, um, I can show you guys really quick actually. I'll take a two minute breather before we move on. Um, when I use the default, so let's go, let's just go like generic ABS. Uh, yeah, so when I use the 0.2 standard, uh, the walls on some of the, the, um, the walls on some of the Switchfire front plate, nope, the walls on some of the stealth burner front face where the hold the LEDs and the, the fans wasn't looking very nice. And so I did end up dropping it down to 0.2 strength. And with 0.2 strength, um, the speed goes from, so we've got, let's see, standard is what? 200 outer wall, 300 inner wall, and it changes it to 60 outer wall. So, I mean, we're talking almost a fourth of the speed. So yeah, that makes a huge difference. Most of the time it's not necessary, but if there's a part that you just want, uh, I mean, again, I guess added strength, but also just to look a little bit nicer, the, the default outer wall speeds are kind of quick very quick so purchased a second bamboo for my shop nice what did you go with did you go with uh, another x1 or did you go with the p p1s uh are we in food talk already yeah we are we are <laughs> okay y axis what are we doing here overview back cool sweet so we need to actually put the printer uh, we need to put the printer back onto our table. So let's move some things here. We'll go back full screen here. Another X1 carbon, nice. Did you get the a a um, AMS with it as well? It's hard to, once you've gotten sort of spoiled with the a AMS, it's hard to not use it. Um, especially if you have the option to. My, my buddy, um, my buddy picked up two P1Ps and the original plan was, one second, let me move. The original plan was to have one with the AMS and one without, and the one without I think was gonna be more for abrasives. And uh, after using the AMS, like he, I think plans on using the AMS more, or getting an AMS, or I think it came with an AMS, but he plans on using the AMS more. It's just like, it's the top loading and having four common, like your most common spools always loaded is really, really nice. Please don't fall, maybe I should. Mm. Mm. Ultimate sketch. Okay, Let's pull this trident out. We don't have a lot of space in here right now, so it's it's been under me the whole time. All right, purple frame. Uh, no AMS running. Oh wow, five kilogram spools. 
you're, you're using on a custom spool holder, right? And then just maybe, uh, geez, five kilogram spools. What material on the 5kg? Is it just PLA or is it something else? Um, chorizo covered chili real Ooh, yum, that sounds good. Still pretty green to 3D printing. I thought the V0 was pretty dialed in. Uh, and then today I've kicked off a paint bucket and light filament. I've got random black blobs in the print. Any ideas? Um, it could be, I mean, if, you're, if your printer was working well and then all of a sudden it's not working well, uh, it could be the slice, like sometimes the slicer will do weird things. So I would check, I would slice something else that you know is sliced good or print under G-code if the filament's a new filament. And if it's new filament as well, I would try the exact same G-code with a different filament. Um, I don't know what you're printing on, but I will say that one thing I've noticed, and I tried making, I wanted to make a video on it, but the results I was getting weren't consistent enough to like prove much of a point, at least not at this, uh, at this point. But the default in both Orca and Bamboo Studio is, uh, where are you? Oh, um, to use Arachne for the wall generator. And I was having some really bizarre issues um, on certain things. Like, um, damn it, I don't think I have, I don't think I have the, the parts that I was testing back when I was. Um, but the, like, I, I tried so many different things. I thought it was my extrusion. I thought it was an issue with um, retraction that wasn't right. And all the, the thing that fixed it was quite literally going from this and clicking classic and re-slicing. Um, and I, and I, it took me forever to come to that conclusion. It was just when I was digging through like wall stuff, I was like, maybe, but probably not. Hey, what's up, Lystic? Uh, Damar, no, oh no, is that back bar on tight? This one? Wait, what's wrong, Delmar? Hey, what's up, hi? Wait, what am I missing? What am I missing, Delmar? Is the back bar, is this bar on tight? Wait, wait, what bar? <laughs> the one sticking vertical? Oh, this is bent. How did that happen? No, I see what you're saying. <laughs> that is super bent. I don't know how. I think I might have, I think I might have loosened something after last week's stream. Yeah, that is really bad. Yeah, it might have been a me thing. Um, let me loosen that extrusion. I did I did take one thing apart after last week's stream. I see what you're saying. It's really, it's really crooked. <laughs> I'll show you guys in the front. It's probably the best angle. Uh yeah, look at hey. This this guy right here is is got a wicked lean forward. Uh and it's definitely this extrusion down below it. So I think what might have happened is I loosened. I think I loosened this extrusion and maybe <laughs> maybe it was on something so let's try it i think it rotated uh ted I'm, I'm pretty sure it rotated i ended up finding that there was some glue on i ended up finding that there was some glue on this workbench after last week and i think that that might have been the culprit so let me let's start by loosening it before we That means I'll have to go get my clamps out again. Holy crap. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, I think it, I don't think it was the actual, bent. It, it was just twisted. So that was probably a me thing after last week's stream when I was just tired and not really figuring out what was going on. So <laughs> I don't think I kicked it. No, I don't think I kicked it. I, I think that it just, um, again, when I was playing around with it, I screwed it up. So, you know what that means? That means we get to bust out all of our clamps. Show Steve how we've learned, we've learned so much. Um, all right, so I've got one, two, three blocks. Let me go grab some clamps. I didn't think we we're gonna be clamping stuff today, but I guess we are. Uh, I'll be right back. Oh, you know what? Let's get the giveaway. Let me get the giveaway open so you guys have something to do. Jack did it. <laughs> he crawled in here, bent the, or bent the <laughs> twisted the uh, extrusion and then Crawled out back to his crib. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm mean, gonna get this one. Good catch, Delmar. To, to be fair, I am pretty oblivious. I would have absolutely caught that at some point, but <laughs> good catch. <laughs> um, 
that was like that was an aggressive lean like real aggressive <laughs> not quite a 45 but we were pushing for it okay so form form is in chat uh, i can't pin it yet because someone needs to type oh here i can do a type i'll type in chat um the little emoji thing in the bottom right corner still can't do it okay one more thing i'm typing random letters in chat there we go now i can do it so it's going to be pinned for 30 minutes and um for anyone that hasn't been here for a giveaway before uh if you don't have a discord don't worry about it just you i think it does make you enter something so just put like na or don't have and i'll reach out via uh email uh we must be using rocket sled delivery i just got the parts ordered yesterday wow it actually scared me uh i thought it bent the bottom extrusion yeah no i've been pretty careful uh, you can't i took this off um i've been pretty careful with this frame it's either been here or like underneath so there shouldn't have been anything that's happened to it that can hit it. I, I have a feeling again that when I loosen things up after last week's stream thinking like, haha, I'll just check things one more time and tighten them down. Um, I probably was in a hurry and and uh, just goofed. So anyways, I'll be back. Let me grab pipes. It's actually kind of funny. Um, I, I'm. There's been many things in life, projects, right, where the thing's pretty good, and for some reason it's like me being stubborn. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like I can make it a little bit better, and then I end up screwing things up. Well, this is the, this is a perfect example of that scenario. Um, I things were pretty like pretty good. I was happy with everything, but I ended up seeing one thing. I was like, oh, maybe it's a little bit off. I can just loosen it and fix it. Well, I ended up loosening it and using the one, two, three blocks and all this stuff and tightening it again and it got no better it was the exact same it was but what i didn't realize is that i twisted the frame it looked like in the process so you know it's like sort of sometimes you just gotta accept that like it's not going to be perfect and you're just going to have to be okay with it uh are you not only careful with your frames no 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 no. i'm always very careful with my frames i just meant because del mar said that he was thinking that maybe it bent and i'm like no i haven't done anything like we haven't I haven't taken it into a mosh pit or done anything crazy with it. Who was that? Okay. That was weird. All right, so we're using these two big clamps to clamp the extrusion that I didn't loosen down to our quartz slab. Like that. And then we are going to I'll go side view. Hey, uh, Swam, I don't know. Did it, was there a notification for the member? Thank you for becoming a member. Best weekday. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Uh, check the punching bit isn't in there like last time. It's not. It, it can't be in there. Um, I, we, we checked them all after the uh, last time. Okay, and so to make sure that this is straight, we are going to take this. I am going to clamp it to our one, two, three block. Like so. You know what, um, just for fun, I'm gonna clamp the other side as well. Since we're gonna be tightening both sides. I guess it's not really for fun, but we're, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, there we go, let's see. Okay, the, yeah, actually, the one thing, I, that's right, last time I had to hold it down because it, let's make sure that we're not lifting off the ground. I'm gonna loosen this one more time. 
and just apply downward pressure as I clamp this. Okay. Doesn't look like it's lifted. Let's street tighten things. <clears throat> Steve is Borg. Uh, well, it's only held on by one bolt at the end. I saw it and knew exactly what it was. Wait, what did he see? Now it'll be out of square again. <laughs> Where did you get your quartz slab? Uh, I got my quartz slab from Pi in chat. <laughs> he lives pretty local to me and uh, loaned it to me at one point for a build and then uh, gave it to me for Christmas. So that's where I got it. Uh, but he got it from, if I'm not mistaken, a uh, like countertop place or like a, uh, yeah, countertop place. And I believe it was a like cutoff or extra um, or runoff, whatever they call it. And um, I don't think there was any cost. And then he took it home and uh, cut, cut it, like cut off the damaged edge of it. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get this as tight as I can. Go back to the other side, do one more tighten, and then hopefully we're good. <clears throat> and I will not be taking this frame apart. <laughs> I will not be taking this frame apart again. Uh, first stream I can see live, what are we doing today? Uh, we are continuing on this Trident build. Uh, it's my first time building a Trident, and we just corrected an incredibly tweaked Extrusion, uh, not because it was tweaked, but because I tweaked it. <laughs> so let's see. It feels right. Feels, yep, feels good. Um, so I'm going to just really quickly do one last little hand tighten on this side. Time to test with, with the tape. I was thinking I get better adhesion with texture to give some parts a nice non glossy finish. Um, how do I convince my wife that I need a $5,000 fireball tools fixture table for school? <laughs> that is, that is one, um, that is one conversation I don't think I'll be able to help much with. <laughs> okay. So hopefully our frame is good now. Um, again, giveaway is open, uh, for a small polymaker filament. So if you have not signed up, we'll do that drawing in 23 minutes. Okay. Thank you. We are back to where we were before. <laughs> Gosh, that was a leaning extrusion. <laughs> I can't believe it. I didn't see that last week. <laughs> um, I'm like, I'm lost right now. One second, everybody. Hey, 93, hey, 69 likes. Nice. <laughs> uh, if you have not hit the like button, please do. Okay, let's get into what we do next. Alrighty. Now we can continue. So we're going to be... Um, Trying to trying to figure out orientation here. I wonder how flat a granite countertop is. I don't know. That's a great question. Flat enough. More flat than the things I used before having this, which is not much. <laughs> um, are we doing T knots on both sides? That is what I'm trying to figure out. Yes. So back left and back right. Yeah. So I'm trying to what I'm doing right here, just so you can see it. Is uh, it's hard to see. Um, you can see, oh man, maybe this shows you the orientation. So like you can see the back pillar, um, I'm trying to not block it with chat. Um, and this is the side it's going into these T nuts, but then on the next image down, uh, it's the opposite side and it's the exact same T nuts. Ooh. And I've also learned a lesson. I'm going to call it out here because I screwed up last time. And that is that these are not all the same T nuts. Um, so the M5, where are we at here? Um, Okay, so one side's all M5, but the other side has M3, at least an M3 uh, down here. And I didn't do that on the 2.4 build, and I tried to, I tried to um, shove an M3 screw into an M5 T nut. So that's definitely something to check. All right, so I guess that we should do smash orientation here again. So going up here, the back of the back of the printer facing like this. Okay, so this is this is the right one. Let's grab our T nuts. We've got M5 right here. Um, 
Okay, so it looks like these are all M5 on the front side. So we're gonna do all M5 right here. Hey, what's up, Tunky? Um, my granite countertop works for me. Squared on my born 2 4 Try to insert your mercury frames on the kitchen counter. My wife was not in the house. <laughs> yeah, if we had, uh, if we had that, I would have started off with using that. But uh, our last place had tile, like tiny little tile squares. And I'm also just watching to see the um, the hole, um, the hole on the uh, Roland T nuts or Roland nuts, whatever we're calling these. Everyone has different names, but it needs to be. I'm gonna follow the graphics so that way they're facing towards the front of the printer for this. Sometimes it actually, it does matter the orientation so that way they're not popping out and looking kind of weird. So that one was like that. The second one's the exact same way. And on the bottom side, two more that are also the same. So let's pop you in there and pop you into there. Then on the back side, it looks like it's, so it's gonna be full facing towards this extrusion. Uh, and two M5s on top, an M5 on the bottom, and an M3 on the bottom. So that's the M3 we gotta we gotta add. So we'll go one right here. Is it focusing? Not really. Are we on manual focus, or what's happening here? No. Huh. Okay, so we got one M5, another M5, like so, and then on the bottom, M5, and then we need to grab an M3. Uh, lunch is over for me, catch your letter. Hey, thanks for stopping by, G-Funny. Congratulations on the house, too. I, I'm definitely, I will message you soon. Uh, M3, yes, M3 is going right here. Okay, so done with that page. Then on the next page, orientation has it like this. Just so you can see. So it's the back back of the uh, printer is right here. So let's also not pull on that. And then it's the same thing. So the front is going to have the M5, all M5 T-nuts. Two, three, four. Hey, what's up, Rise? Morning. My wife kicked my printers out of the spare bedroom and said, if I get rid of the fish tank, I can move my printers into the enclosed lounge. So my printer room will be 350 square feet. Are you getting rid of the fish tank? That's a tough, that is a big sacrifice. I am really wanting a fish tank again. I'm a big fan of the fish and fish keeping. It's been many, many years, but my uh, second like real job um, working for somebody was at PetSmart and boy, was that a fun job. Um, but my buddy there, one of my buddies there had like a massive, I think a couple hundred gallon tank where he was breeding certain fish that he would sell. It was like a side, like a side gig. And he got me into fish keeping, um, not to the extent that he did, but I had a 55 gallon, like I built a wooden table thing for, for it all. And I had a 55 gallon tank, fresh water with like all natural grass and driftwood. Um, it was beautiful. And then I had a sump down below and I was trying to breed uh, ghost shrimp in there. Um, it was, it was awesome. I really, really, um, really loved it. Uh, Monkey Butler, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships. We'll do a little, little air horn action. Thank you so much. Uh, Sebastian, Tunke, Edwin, Lucas, and Ben, you guys all got gifted memberships. Thank you for the support. Um, uh, what was I talking about? Fish tanks. <laughs> yeah, I, I was really happy and proud of it. And then I, I had to, I was cleaning it out. I was cleaning out the tank. And so I was using one of the vacuums, which are basically just like a, you siphon, get the siphon going and you use it to vacuum all the fish crap and debris and all that stuff. Um, one sec, I don't wanna make sure. Oh, interesting. So there's no M3 bolt on this side? Okay, so I assumed there was an M3 
there was an M3 on this side as well, but it looks like both M5, 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 M5. So yeah, I guess not. It's just, um, so we'll do all M5s. Yeah, I, I, um, I don't remember where I went, but I had to go somewhere. So I ran out the door, I squirreled, squirreled out the door. And when I came back, I realized that I had not stopped the vacuum siphon. Uh, and I had like, a pro I don't remember exactly, but I would say at least 15 to 20 gallons of water on my bedroom carpet. And uh, my parents were not thrilled. <laughs> it was an absolute nightmare. Um, trying to move everything and get a shop back and try to not get mold. And like, it, it was an absolute nightmare. Um, and uh, I got rid of my tank after that. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly if it was my parents that made me do it, if it was me and I was like, yeah, I'm not, maybe I'm not right, <laughs> like responsible enough for a big fish tank at this point. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I really want to get back into it. I, I would likely do fresh water still. I, I know like, don't get me wrong, uh, saltwater fish tanks are freaking sweet. There's just so much more that goes into it, equipment-wise and time-wise, um, that I'd like to have it sort of as minimal, like as hands-off as possible, although I know fish tanks are quite involved. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I loved it. It was so much fun. Uh, we raised African cichlids. Nice. Yeah, cichlids are awesome. It was, mine was a pretty friendly tank. I had, uh, the most aggressive thing I had was one gourami that was sort of the jerk of the tank. And then it was some dwarf catfish, a couple, I think I had a couple plecos. Uh, what else did I have? Uh, two African dwarf frogs. And I might have a video of it somewhere. I loved it. It was a very friendly, like community tank, just peaceful. Uh, we had a red devil for a while. That guy had a personality. <laughs> the red devil, is that a cichlid too? I think it is an African cichlid, right? Or is it an Oscar? I can't, I can't remember. Oscars are also jerks. <clears throat> Oops. The wrong button. Okay, so all of our tina's are in. Delmar confirmed that we don't need it for both sides. Oh, sweet. So now we're going to attach, um, now we're going to attach our uh, idlers or tensioners in place. And we need M510s for this. We've got tens. And it looks like the orientation is still the same. Um, so let me grab, grab this. Um, so with the Voron logo facing towards the front and the bolt head facing, okay, cool. Yep, so it looks like all we're gonna be doing, I'll turn this towards here. This is the front left of the printer, front right of the printer. It's kind of dark, I don't know why it's so dark. Um, this is going to be going here on the very front. Let's see if I can even do this I might need to loosen I think I might need to loosen things up a little bit that bolt that I done top um, because there are um, sort of these you can't really see that can you <laughs> all right talking to talking about things you can't see there's little like inlays to keep these aligned inside of the slots of the 2020 extrusions and because of that I need a little bit of room to get this over without damaging it. So I'm just gonna loosen this bolt that's going through it ever so slightly. I think I tightened it a hair too much. Um, and that should allow us, hopefully, to slide this over the top. Um, let's see. Let's do like two turns. Yeah, there we go. So just a little bit too tight for that. Um, and then we are going to, I'm gonna have to turn this towards me. So I don't know how you're gonna see that. Maybe if I change your angle, there we go. Change it to look like this. Uh, we were yes, I do. The Kenji and Yellow Peacocks were great. Uh, there we go. Oh, jeez. Uh, I mean, it was a 450 gallon display. Oh my God, y'all. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at that in a bit. Anyone watch the first episode of Futurama? Reboot, I have not. Uh, think that huge lake dried up and is all gone now. It's crazy. Okay. Now we are going to just make sure that our, um, those little T-nuts are, I guess, they're not called, what are we calling them? They're called T-nuts in this build. We're calling them T-nuts. The T-nuts that we installed are aligned correctly so that way we can, um, can't actually see. Might be easier to angle this. Yeah, so the bottom ones weren't perfectly aligned. There we go.
Uh, 10 more minutes on the giveaway, and then we'll do the drawing. So we got M310. M310. Oops. For this, I'm actually going to use the ball. So it's kind of at an angle I got to go in at. Two more on the bottom. Okay. So now I'm going to not overly tighten them, but definitely at least hand tighten all of them. And then the last thing I want to do is just, um, I loosen this and I think it's a little bit too loose now, the uh, bolt on the tension mechanism. So I'm going to really quickly just turn it a couple more times. There we go. So it still slides, but it just doesn't have as much like up and down wiggle to it anymore. Hey, what's up, William? Happy Wednesday. Okay, we've got one of them on. I think we're probably doing the next, oops, what, oh. My hardware is on the spacebar, so we are zooming, and I want to be scrolling. Okay, so we're just going to rinse and repeat on the other side. Hopefully that's about in focus. I will start, just do the exact same thing. So I'm going to loosen, uh, loosen the big bolt on this a couple turns, just so that way it's easier to slide this over. I don't put any unnecessary stress on the part. Uh, this goes, wait a minute. Did I screw up? No, I didn't. I just never realized. Is it like that on the, um... I didn't realize. Okay, so let me show what I'm... I didn't realize that the M3 screw that you use to tension the belts, on this side, it's on the bottom, and on this side, it's on the top. Is it like... I don't know if it's like on the 2.4. I don't remember it, but it made me think I did something wrong. But we didn't, so... <laughs> I'm happy about that. There we go. All right, and we'll do the same thing. Just quickly check to make sure that all of our T-nuts are aligned with the holes on this. I'm just gonna go, go, go down low on this one. There we go. Uh, yep, threw me off too. It's like on the 2.4. Weird, I guess I just didn't notice it when we built the 2.4. But yeah, it definitely made me feel like I did something, <laughs> did something wrong. I guess that makes sense though. They have to be opposite. They have to be offset since one belt's higher and one belt's lower. It makes it makes total sense. I just I guess because I don't remember it being like that on the 2.4, which is silly considering I just was tensioning it. Oh, it changed in the R2 on the 2.4. Oh, so maybe it's so you're saying it's not like that on the latest one? You guys can't see what I'm doing, can you? There we go. Okay, so once again, just hand tighten, hand tighten, hand tighten. Hand tighten, hand tighten, hand tighten. Uh, Rama, R Rama Llama fronts way better than the conventional Gentry ends. I've heard that talked about so many times um, between this build and the 2.4. I need to check them out. Can somebody can somebody tag, like drop that name or drop a link to that in uh, the live stream channel in the Discord? I just want to check them out. I'm still not going to do them yet, but I, I definitely want to take a look at them. Okay, and then just like on the other one, just tighten this back up again since I loosened it. Um, should still be sliding, but don't have quite as much wiggle, so. Um, 3D experiments, I'm super late. Is this the 250 millimeter kit? No, this is, uh, as of right now, Cyborg doesn't have a 250. They have a 300 and a 350, or maybe you mean height. It's a 300 by 300 by 250. 
I'm not sure if you meant, um, so. Clay just released new front idlers. Ooh. Uh, hey, Cody, uh, how's it going? I love that purple profile. Yeah, it's a really pretty, like, chrome, real futuristic looking color. I, I do like it. On R1, before they were symmetrical, in the middle got used to kink over. Oh, interesting. Okay. Three, uh, 300 millimeters is ideal for me. Yeah, I, I think that 300, millim 300 millimeters is probably even more than I need, really, but um, I think it's a really good sweet spot. All right, so these are good. Slide into place. We've done that. Uh, now we're going to be putting the Y axis. So looking at the picture here, if that's the back extrusion, orientation should be like this. Um, and this is the one with the, there we go. Okay. So this is going right here. We'll do this, slide this over. Hopefully we can bend this without, geez Louise, did I really? I feel like this should be able to, Really don't want to damage it. Okay, so I'm going to loosen. Um, same thing. I'm just going to loosen these two bolts really quick. A couple turns to give us a little bit more. Although this could be also what's doing it. I'm going to loosen everything here. I guess that's what I'm what I'm saying. So let's see if I don't think that did it. We need to loosen the other bolts too. Jeez, where's the right driver? 2.5. Yeah, so I'm gonna tighten these up again, I guess, once I get them in place. I just, I don't like the feeling of trying to stretch these parts out to get them over, um, over the extrusions. There we go. Okay, so it's basically the exact same thing we've just been doing, but with the AB motors. So I'm gonna start by aligning the T-nuts. Uh, there's a couple, it looks like a couple of new people in chat. If you haven't, uh, get into the giveaway. Three minutes left. It's a link that's posted in the uh, chat and we're gonna be giving away a spool of Polymaker filament. Okay, so I think we're good on that. And we're using, same thing, M5 by 10s. <clears throat> uh, Delmar can release, really thank you. Hey, what's up, 3D print tinkering? Print tinkering. <laughs> Those, that word combined makes it tough to say. I was, I'm gonna go with tinkering. Hey, pretty tinkering. Uh, funny, we got one fish and it was called a pes piscivore. Turns out that means fish eater. Little guy swallowed bigger, oh my God. Yeah, all my fish were real friendly except for the um, uh, gourami. It was such a pretty fish or like real orange and like blue stripes on him. Uh, really, really gorgeous fish, but yeah, just a total jerk. He would go up or I think it was a he, I don't know, would go up to the top and um, create like bubble nests or try to create a bubble nest. And uh, yeah, just not a nice fish. He didn't, I don't think he killed any of the fish, but he sure as hell stressed out a lot of the fish. 10 more likes until we hit 100. Ooh, if you haven't hit the like button, please do. We're trying to hit 100 before we do the giveaway in like a minute or two. Uh, loosen the bolts. Oh, it says, I'm a goof, man. It, the, the instructions <laughs> say right here to loosen the bolts and slide into place. So if I could go back in time to when we were attaching these two halves together, I just wouldn't have tightened them so much. But it, the instructions do say as well, so I'm glad we did end up doing that. All right, hand tightening the top and the bottom. All right, and then before I forget, because I will forget, let's tighten these up again for now. I don't know, we might need to loosen them when we put the back extrusion on, I don't really know, but I, um, I'd rather just have things back to where they were. 
Okay, that feels probably plenty tight. I, we're threading back into plastic for these um, bearing stacks, so I don't want to overdo it. Okay, hopefully that's okay. They're both still moving freely. Uh, and the last thing we need to do is just the motor mounts. Need a couple more turns as well, because we loosen this. Okay, probably good enough for now. All right, yeah, probably good enough. Um, have you any idea of when the 2.4 video will come out? I'm just so impatient to see it. Oh, I don't know yet. Um, there are so many videos in the queue like that are being worked on. Um, and like, it's so, it's kind of funny with 3D printer reviews is that like there won't be any there won't be any printers I'm reviewing for a while, or like I'll be down to just the single printer I'm reviewing. And then all the printers, like the, the they seem to release on competing schedules. So they're always with each other. So right now I'm testing out one, two, three, four, five, like six machines, um, like collectively. I mean, 2.4 is one of them and a resin printer is one of them, but like, and I, and, that, and like, I don't just do reviews, right? Like I do a lot of other videos. I try not to do more than two reviews max per month. So that way two videos are not review videos, uh, at least not print review videos. Some are like overviews, like the uh, Victory Tech 1.2 video or like the Bamboo Lab. I don't consider those reviews. They're like showcasing slash discussion slash how to. Um, so yeah, it just, it takes, when it gets to this like busy point, it just takes me a long time because I'm trying to, like juggle and not like cut things in front of lines. So I'm doing my best. <laughs> Long story short, I'm doing my best. Uh, night people get it set up for shipping label printer. Have a good night Dutch. Does the Trident use the kinematic bed and bed tramming? It does use a kinematic kinematic bed and bed tramming. Yeah, it is a three point. So uh, there'll be a lead screw here, a lead screw here and a lead screw in the back. So three point. Uh, I was wondering why you were up so early all the time. Okay, let's, um, I'm going to remove the giveaway link. So let's see, remove and unpin. And then I'm gonna give everybody like a minute and then I'll download, uh, I'll download the list and we'll do the giveaway. How many entries do we have? We have got 109 entries so far. Hey, we hit 105 likes. Thank you guys. I didn't realize we went over. Let's, thank you very much. I don't know that we've hit 100. I don't know if we've hit 100 likes at giveaway time in a really long time. Usually it's later on. Thank you. Thank you everybody. I don't blame you at all. I love your work. Thanks for the answer. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. I just, I try my absolute best not to compromise on like my process and the amount of time I think I need on something. And a lot of companies definitely try to put pressure on, I mean, me, but any creator I would imagine to get, you know, when are you gonna do the video on my, on my printer? And uh, I, I try to always give it enough time because I just want to, some printers require more time than others. It depends on like, is there issues? Like what is there additional parts of it? Like that make it unique that I need to dive into more. So it's, it's just tough. And there's also times where yeah, it just, it just takes a while. A lot, a lot of times that a company reaches out, I'll tell them, if you're going to send a printer, it's going to be somewhere between probably 60 and 90 days before I can get a video out on it. Now that's not always the case. It really just depends, but I don't like making any other promises because in reality, it takes a lot of time. So, um, yeah, because you had to give away anything for some reason, I can never find it. It's, it's only hidden at the very end. Gotta be a goal now, start that streak. Yeah, okay. You're right, Steve's right. That'll be our new goal as 100 before giveaway. Um, let's do this. So there's 110, one other person got in. Oh, it's freaking hardware is on the space bar. All right, let me download, let me download the responses. Extract all, boom, boom. Upload this back to drive. Oh 
gosh, I have way too many. What's today's date? 26, yeah. I have way too many folders open. Uh, replace existing file. Oh, come on. Never, never just straightforward. It always has something. There we go. All right, I got everybody. So 110 people. We've got 110 entries. Dutch, Dutch was the first. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Right, here we go. And here we go. Awesome. Here we go. The magic wheel. All right, let me get a quick drink here. Uh, almost ready for quesadilla. Ooh, I am so ready for a quesadilla. That sounds incredible. A uh, question for you: What, what paste would you use on a printer hot end? Uh, I don't use any, so it depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about like a filament uh, deflecting paste, I've never used any. I know that Slice makes one, um, or repellent. I've never used any of them, so I, I don't have a recommendation. If you're talking about like on the heat break, uh, I never used to use any, but so many people have sworn by the boron, uh, what is it, the boron nitrate stuff that Slice has. And so um, that's what I've been using and I've been happy with it. It just, this, this is... This is the stuff. Um, it's not cheap, but I mean, on a, a tube of it, it's gonna last you for forever unless you decide to start a print farm. So I ordered a, uh, not a spool, I ordered this, I think on Amazon, I don't have it on Amazon and it's worked great. But realistically, I mean, any is gonna, any is gonna be better than none. Um, I know that Drop Effect or Fadus did some sort of test at one point. Um, and I was like, cool. And it, uh, the results between some of the main brands out there weren't that big of a difference. I don't know where that test is. I don't know where they published it, but honestly, if you go with like, I think for PC, like Arctic Cooler was like one that was really popular, the CPU paste, like I think that stuff um, would probably work well as well. Uh, so why not download and like printables as well, Kaka, free filament for Dutchie. Before I did, I gotta say the builder is getting the free filament as well because of the printables, nice. Okay, let's do this. Uh, boron nitride is mostly like 50, 95% placebo. Yeah, I, I I mean, I've heard so many good things about it for many years now that regardless if it is placebo or not placebo, for 20 bucks, I, I've got it and it's worked fine. So, but yeah, I can't, I can't swear that it's like going to be the biggest change or biggest difference over some standard high quality thermal compound. I won't stand by it, like with my stamp of approval, uh, tried and true, but like it's what I use and it seems to work fine. Anyways, uh, before we do this, thank you to Polymaker for allowing us to give away a spool of filament. Um, if you're new, the way it works is if you're in the US or Canada, you'll end up getting a gift card that you can either use for a like standard spool of filament or if it's uh, like a carbon fiber um, or like an exotic filament that's pricey, you can use it off of that item. And I think the gift card's $35, zombie, that sounds right, zombie I don't think's here, but um, that sounds right to me. And then if you're not in the US or Canada, it's any spool of PLA, ABS, PETG, or ASA, um, just not exotic. So you just choose the color, you get the SKU, and then submit it into the form, and then Polymaker will ship it out. So thank you to Polymaker for allowing us to do this. They've, it's been probably, it's been well over a year that they've been giving away a spool a week on the stream, which is just awesome. So massive thank you to them. And if you do want to support the channel and you need either some filament or want to try it out, there's a link down below in the description and it does um, support the channel out a bit. So it's always appreciated. Alrighty. Um, gosh, what number, what number for a shuffle today? I'm trying to think if there's anything significant uh, that's happened. Oh, I, 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 I got one. We're gonna go with 12. We're gonna shuffle for 12. All right, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 42 is way too many. Here we go. All right, good luck everybody in three, two, one. Here we go. Rise, Rise P, you are our winner. Congratulations. I think that's a first as well. I don't, at least on this channel. Do we have still confetti? Oh no, confetti doesn't work anymore. We'll do, we'll do cheer. Congratulations, Rise. Um, so I will send you an email later today that will have the Polymaker form. And depending on where you're located, uh, it'll either be again a gift card or you can choose your spool of filament. So, <clears throat> congratulations. Hey, Maple, how's it going? Uh, lap, uh, 
chat partially blocks the results. Oh, really? Oh, no kidding. That's funny. Um, I can move chat. I didn't. It didn't used to because we didn't have a background. Uh, let's go bottom left. Ish. Like. Uh, we'll go there for now. Well, that's fine. Yeah, I didn't realize it blocked chat. Uh, Dutch Knight. Hey, have a great night. First time on the channel. Oh, nice. Nice. Congratulations. First time winning on any channel. That's exciting. All right. Let's see. I think we're just doing the other side now. Yep, the Y axis. So. Let's get to installing. Yeah, that, uh, I've got quesadillas on my mind now. All right, so this is just going on the final side. And this is the side that has an M3 key nut. So we're going to do the same thing, which is loosen the motor screws a couple turns, as well as the larger, um, as well as the two larger screws, just so that way we can slide this on easier and then we will hopefully there we go slide it over the extrusion cable should be facing outwards which they are and they're slid in place so now um same thing align our t-nuts and then i will shove my head underneath the printer the only one i can't tell if it's aligned is the m3 screw the m3 i don't think it is I really can't tell if I'm being honest. Uh, it's about right. It's on the outside, so if I have to, we'll push it after. Uh, make it easier to rechat when I read, uh, when I watch Bon at work. Yeah, I, um, the chat, everyone, well, not everyone, a lot of people had wanted chat to be darker, so I finally made a background, like a sort of semi-transparent black background for chat, which definitely is a nice improvement. It, I think that I, I'm going to go with I stole that from Steve. Um, I, somebody recommended it prior in chat, but when I saw Steve's, I was like, yeah, that's, that's, that is really nice. Uh, Lisa, thank you. Hey, 13, 13 months. Thank you. Uh, Aaron was asking if you're ready for quesadillas. I said yes. <laughs> I saw it. I, I, I said yes. Chat was better before. Don't say that, you know. Nobody liked it because it was like white on the, um, it was white on the quartz, which made it really difficult to read. <laughs> um, I will probably, yeah, now I'm pretty happy with the way it is now. Uh, quarter cup coffee, three scoops of ice cream, and a large peppermint patty blend well on top of Luke. Oh, that sounds really good. All right, so on the bottom side, we are doing... Oh, nothing on the bottom yet. Okay. Um, where do you go? M3, M510s. All right, so let's also, um, I'm just quickly going to tighten the motor screws and the two screws in the back that we loosened a second ago. Dude, quesadilla sounds so good. Okay, that's probably good enough. And then I'm gonna get the two big screws on the back. Oh shit. I forgot I forgot that I was threading into uh the printed part for the bearing stacks. I don't think I went too tight. Just gotta remember. Okay, so that's good. That's fine. And then we're actually gonna I'm gonna flip this over um for the next piece. Or wait, no, that's optional, Hall Effect Sensor. So, if you're using Hall Effect and Slot Board, the place of the magnet during initial calibration. Okay, since we're not using Hall Effect Sensor, I imagine we still need a part that goes there. Uh, do not let wife, do not let wife taste. Erin loves peppermint patties. Um, she hasn't had them in a while, but it's definitely a big fan. She usually uh, puts them in the freezer. She likes them in the freezer, like ice cold. All right, so this looks like it's an accent piece. 
So hopefully that makes it a little bit easier to track down. Uh, yep, there we go. Okay, so since we're not using the magnet, I'm guessing we just leave. So it looks like it has a slot for the magnet, uh, or the hull, hull effect, or it would be for the magnet. Uh, but since we're not using it, I think we just keep this as is. So this will go like that. Wife brought home a Russell, Russell Stover's maple egg. Oh my god, little I know she had. <laughs> um, so for this, we need M312. M312, M312, where are you? Uh, looks like we... Okay, yeah, M312 socket head. And then M516, which is right here. And that's not how you do it. Before I fully tighten it, let's make sure that our M3 goes in. Um, where'd you go, driver? There should be a driver right here. There it is. Uh, any idea how big the footprint is of a Trident Thunder Kit in centimeters, please? Oh, uh, I, I, I mean this, uh, I don't actually because I don't have the bottom on yet. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, does anybody that has a Trident know the answer to that? Uh, also, this is not lined up correctly, so I need to... There we go. Okay, so that's good. Uh, the question is what the overall footprint of the Trident is in centimeters. I don't even know what the overall footprint is. I mean, I, I could measure the frame, I suppose, but there's the height is a factor that I wouldn't have right now. And then I guess you add the spool in the back as well. For, uh, 46 by 46 by 50, according to the configurator. There you go. I've worn it for a while. His tiny feet and arms get caught quite often. Oh. She's talking about the mesh or the, the gate for the... Uh, Baby's crib. Okay, that's good. That is in place. All right, next up we need the D extrusion. So let's oh, let's move this out of the way for a sec here. You know what? No, let's do this. Yeah, overhead. Okay. So happy about. Oh, you know what? Let's let's not lose things. Let's put these back away really quick. Uh, and this, uh, add the ten centimeter foots to the fifty. Okay, so I said de-extrusion. De-extrusion. And for this, we... I don't think there's any holes. No. Uh, nope. We need a bunch of M5 T-nuts, which are right here. So we'll do... One on this side. Another one on that side with the holes facing outwards, and then... Same thing on the other side. All right, then flip it over. It's like a full, full 180. And then two more on the outside in the same orientation. Uh, 
Uh, what is that? Bullseye print? Um, that's a great question. The one that's in here? I have no idea. <laughs> that was the first time I saw it when I was throwing it back in the bag. Um, this guy? Yeah, I, I have no idea. Anybody know what this is? It looks like it fits into whatever this is. Um, is it for a screen? Maybe it's for the screen? I don't know how or why. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. It's a great question. <laughs> I thought kind of the same thing. Like, huh, you're sort of different. Okay, and then let's go ahead and we don't need the tape on anymore. We know this is the de-extrusion. Let's remove you. And then we also need to add two more T-nuts. Um, one facing each direction. So one facing that direction, the other one facing that direction. I don't know spacing, so I'm just gonna sort of go with the right that for now. LED diffuser? Ah, Steve modeled that part. That's awesome. So does that mean that it's incorrect since it's in blue? Is it, if it's a diffuser, I would think that this is probably supposed to be clear then, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Because the Bitchy Check screen versus the Pi 6 screen, the Bitchy Check one has a smaller knob that sticks way further out. Oh. It's not a diffuser. So it's a spacer then, right? Like a riser? That's awesome. All right, sweet. So we're gonna actually go straight into installing this back into the printer. Uh. So, uh, orientation wise, that I need to figure out. Cause it shows we have the two extra. Oh, that's got to be on the bottom. It's got to be on the bottom. Yeah. Cool. So, we are going to be... Oops. Oh, sliding this. Hold on. Back you guys up a little bit. There we go. About right. Okay. So, the ones with the, the, the side that has the two extra is going downwards. And then on this, ah oh crap, you know what? I probably shouldn't have, I probably shouldn't have tightened the two halves of these pieces yet. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this, no. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, no, we can do it, we can do it. Maybe, uh, hold on. You know what, I think sliding it from the outside might be easier. Yeah, let's just try to... Nope, we're gonna loosen it again. All right, so mistake I made was tightening up everything again. We need to loosen it until we get this extrusion in. So loosen a couple turns, the motor mount again. Loosen on both sides. LED lighting blockage device. Today it will, when the LED gets printed. All right, loosen you, loosen you, loosen you, and loosen you. I hear Aaron coming. Hello? What do you mean? I said, yeah, KCD sound great. Yeah, twice. Twice? Yeah. Thank you. I've got water. Thank you very much. Yeah, I did respond. And then I saw Lisa said it. And I said, yeah, I know I saw it. And I said it. Next time I'll say, yes, Erin, I like the quesadilla. <laughs> Thank you. It looks delicious. Mm. <clears throat> she mixed. Look at this. She mixed sour cream with cilantro. That's fancy. <laughs> mm -mm. This is really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got some for everybody. 
If we ever have like some sort of meetup thing, we need to have a pizza for everybody because we always talk about food. We talk about pizza a lot. If I ever have, if I ever have a local Modbot meetup, we are bringing pizza. <clears throat> Okay. Oh, that's so good. Let me get this extrusion on before I eat some more. Um, oh, come on. There we go. All right. Cool. Oh, as far as... So as far as spacing uh, between the extrusion and these motor mounts, I'm gonna just kind of eyeball it for right now. Uh, let's see, the rear crossbar, uh, manual loose M5 bolts, M510s. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do my best to eyeball, um, eyeball centered for now. Uh, let me need M510s, let's tighten this up. <clears throat> Pineapple pizza, yes. Cilantro equals toxic soap tasting nastiness. I you don't like cilantro? Cilantro is so good. Uh, I'm up for a meeting in Portugal. It's close to Italy. <laughs> I would love to go back to Portugal. Okay, I'm just gonna loosely fit these in to make sure they're at least grabbing. Um, on the bottom, yeah, it looks like they're actually aligned, nice. It's delicious. I don't know if she heard me. Come to Belgium uh, so you can meet with Dutch and Eggy and myself. <laughs> See if I can convince Aaron to let me do a world tour. <laughs> oh, call it mod, mod, mod abroad. <laughs> All right, this is not fitting, but it looks like it's pretty well aligned. What's going on? What are we doing wrong? There we go. All right, so these are all still nice and loose, but they're at least aligned correctly. Four for the other side. Mmm, spaghetti, yum. That's one of my favorite meals. Uh, my mom makes a killer homemade spaghetti sauce that I used to ask her for, for most of, not most, but a lot of my birthdays. You'll need some food to look good. We all need some food to look good. <laughs> Mod abroad. <laughs> it's got a it's got a nice ring to it. <laughs> the channel will change from a like 3D printing making channel to just like a uh, travel travel vlog. <laughs> 3D printing across the globe. Alright, All right, that one in. Awesome. So those are all in. This is still loose, which is what we want. I'm gonna take a take a minute break here to eat this. Probably stream for about another 30 minutes um, until four o'clock. The uh, mortgage lady called, and I want to give her a call back before she's out of the office just to see what what's going on. Hey, Kyle. Sponsored by XY. <laughs> I missed that. That's great. People who hate cilantro can also taste almonds. Yeah, I like most all foods. Uh, growing up, even if I didn't like a food, my parents still made me eat it. Like, I didn't have to like, let's say, so I didn't like mushrooms growing up, right? And my parents weren't like, here's a bowl of mushrooms, eat them. But when they made a meal, if there was a thing I didn't like, they would at least make me take a couple bites of it. and. Kid you not, I strongly think that over time that it, I just started liking them because because of that um, versus sort of having the mindset of, no, I don't like it, I don't like it. And then you, like, if you say you don't like something, you absolutely will never like it because you're saying you don't. So I think that kind of like having that open-mindedness to the food and like, ah, I'll have a bite. Um, but yeah, the, the only things I didn't like growing up were I didn't like avocado, I didn't like mushrooms, and I didn't like 
squash. I still don't like cottage cheese. It's just funky to me. Aaron, Aaron um, had a big cottage, uh, cottage cheese kick a while back and ugh, she made me try it. Uh, I don't like almond milk either or almond water or whatever, whatever, coconut water. The stuff, yeah, ugh. but most things I do like a lot. Hey, what's going on, Robert? Uh, auto correction is disastrous on this phone. Um, I, mean, I was always trying to correct the words in fresh. I hate octopus. I I don't know if I like or don't like octopus. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I've had it. Uh, but it would be such a... Like, not normal... Like, it wouldn't be part of the normal meal. Um, so if I've had it, it would be at, like, probably some fancy sushi restaurant or something like that. Cottage cheese with honey and black pepper. Oof. I just, I just, it's something about it. Um, she was having cottage cheese with peaches. That was her thing. Mm -mm. I love squid fried calamari. I like calamari. Um, Aaron doesn't like calamari. Uh, the Italian restaurant I used to work at, one of the appetizers was like fried calamari with um, the marinara sauce. Delicious. So good. So yeah, I, I do like calamari. Or, yeah, Fred Kelmer. Tomato? There's quite, there's a, more people, I don't think Aaron's mom likes tomatoes. There's quite a few people I know that don't like tomatoes, which I, I just find so odd. It's such a, like, it's such a non-aggressive flavor. It's like, like, mush. Like, I mean, not mush, that's not right. But, like, it's just, like, watery and... I don't know. It just gives a little, just a little extra pizzazz to like any sandwich or hamburger. It's such a, I don't know, such a mild flavor. I'm lucky I'm full from earlier, so I'm not affected with all this food talk. <laughs> yeah, it's part of, it's part of the stream. Almost, almost every stream that gets to a point where it's like we hit the food wall. Mm -mm. I can't stand tomato, but I'll eat sauces made from it. I've seen that too. Um, like where people just don't like tomatoes, but they're fine with marinara sauce, so spaghetti or pizzas, but like an actual tomato, they just won't do it. A tomato is 95% water. Yeah, it, it quite literally just adds a little extra, like maybe like a tiny bit of crunch if it's nice and ripe. Crunch isn't probably even the right word. Um, Crunch makes it sound like a cracker or a cookie or something like that, but. <clears throat> okay. Aaron, if you're listening, that was delicious. Thank you. That was a really, really good case of I mean, like, delicious. Okay, uh, put the pics of my tank demolition up from Discord. Okay, sweet. Let's see if I see real quick. Um, where is it in general? Oh, here it is. We're gonna share, we're all gonna look at your tank. So this is the fish tank. How big? You said it was uh, 1,600 liters. Wow. That's a monster. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> that is a massive tank. Yeah, those those weren't the right descriptions, uh, David. I know. <laughs> But I love me some tomatoes. We like, um, we're big on uh, caprese salads and prosciutto. Oh, so good. But yeah, I mean, teach their own. More tomatoes, <laughs> more tomatoes for me, I guess. Uh, okay, so we've got these in place. I'm trying to think if we should tighten these things back up right now. Yeah, I think we should. If we're gonna be basing a 90 degree, or wait, No. But yeah, I think that we should tighten up everything. Let's do that really quick. So all I'm gonna do, oh man, I got hiccups now, is, we'll move you guys a little bit so I can 
look at this from head on and try my best to make sure that it is aligned. Uh, let's see. That looks pretty dang. That looks pretty dang good to me. I see the little bit of the bottom part of the printed part on that side, as well as on this side, maybe just a hair a bit more like that. We'll leave that for right now. <clears throat> okay, tightening this, tightening this. Uh, nice to Daniel, really need to speed up this build. What do you mean? We've made a great progress. I feel like we've been doing better than we normally would do, nice. Oh, is it because of the VZ you mean? Like you want the VZ build, is that why? Or... <laughs> I feel like we're doing great, nice. I think that's good enough for that. Let's also really quickly tighten up these motors. motors. Uh, your one, two, three block, use your one, two, three block to square it. Now my stomach is growling. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Alan. Tomato with uh, oregano and mozzarella for me, please. Uh, yeah, tomato and mozz, yes. No, well, you don't like, uh, you don't do basil? I love, we love some fresh basil. All right. Perception is subjective. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep living on this, uh, living in this cloud nice of uh, killing it. And uh, <laughs> thank you very much. All right. That's done. Let's get the bottom of these tightened up. Okay, now I'm just gonna go around and finish tightening these so they're at least as hand tightened as I would like. Okay, I think that's good. I think that is good. Uh, on the path to another two-month build. Hey, come on, Quinn. <laughs> two months is the correct amount of time to build a printer, okay? It's the, it's the, uh, what do they say? It's the, uh, not the destination. It's the journey, not the destination. Do you think you'll build an Annex Engineering K3 kit? I know Fabrica has one going for $155. Would you consider building one? Yeah, it's definitely something I would like to build. I talked to Fabrico about it, um, probably during the Mercury 1 build, and, uh, he sounded like there was interest in sponsoring one at some point, so... Um, we'll see. I'm not I'm not in a rush, but yeah, it's it's definitely um, possibility. Uh, that offset is deliberate. Okay, that's good enough. Thank you, Troy. I usually cook and eat during Daniel's streams. That's what you should. This is this is a this isn't just a build along. It's a eat along as well. Um, offset extrusion. So now we need to get these corner brackets. Um, which I discovered are printed, but I don't know where in this kit they are. And I don't see them here. It's like hot end parts. This is a back filter. This is some skirts. This is some more skirts. This is some more and more skirts. All the skirts. This looks like... This looks like panel pieces. That's the parts falling. There we go. Found them. These guys. Uh, let's see. Give belts a space to run. That's what that's what that's for. The offset. Okay. 
Um, the extrusion between A and B is offset inwards. Wait, the extrusion is off Oh, interesting. So you're saying... Oh, that's okay. Gotcha. So it's supposed to be sticking out the back a little bit. Interesting. Okay, that feels absolutely like I did something wrong, or there's something wrong. But I'm glad. I'm glad that we're all here together uh, to confirm that that's not the case. So uh, the, let's read the read the guide. The extrusion between A and B drives is offset inwards. Upright extrusion extends past it towards the back of the printer. Yes. Um, okay, cool. Okay. So now we're just gonna get some M5 T nuts on either side of this extrusion. Turn this a little bit so you can see. There we go. Okay, so, M5, Oop, that's not how you do it. Okay, gonna use my little magnet, there we go. Put my thumb in the channel to prevent that from happening, and then try to do that on the other side as well. Hey, what's up, zombie? What, oh, I thought that was a big scratch. It's the tape I had on there. I joined your ZNZ, uh, zombie. I don't know if it was last night or the night before. I caught the very, very end of it. Um, like right, I don't think it was a very long, um, I don't think it was a very long stream. Okay, so it looks like, yeah, with the offset then, it goes like that. That's cool. So this, this um, extrusion alignment piece of this is offset then, so that way it will keep this the correct amount of offset. That's cool. Um, so let's start with this side. That doesn't seem right. There we go. Okay. Uh, I saw that. We do a recording in the middle to publish to YouTube. Oh, gotcha. Um, well, just got here, it resembles a trident. Not quite there yet. Yeah, we were making some good progress though. I'm really happy with the progress we made. Um, I feel like a lot of what we, a lot of what I learned and did wrong during the 2.4 build, I've been able to avoid in this build. Hmm. Okay, so that's still loose enough there, I can slide. Cool. Uh, what I'm gonna do is put the other one in and then I will flip the printer over so we can see it from the bottom better. How often do you guys do Z and Z, zombie? Is it weekly or is it bi-weekly? I know it's fairly often, I just don't know that it's weekly. Uh, I, managed, I managed to kill an entire MAPCV1 and all the drivers with something. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm laughing like with you, not at you. That's <laughs> that's wild. Jeez. What printer was that on? Knock on wood, the only board I think I've ever destroyed um, was the, well, okay, that's not true. Back in the day when printers were using ramps and Arduino setups, I fried quite a few, like quite literally just plugging in the power and then smoke comes out of them. Um, but since like boards have gotten better, the only one I recall destroying was the um, SKR Mini that we saw smoke on stream. Uh, but that was again, due to the, the switch wire falling and the gantry flying to one side. So it just, it acted as a generator and just destroyed one of the drivers. Okay, so this is aligned and the other side is 
Did I forget? I, nope. Uh, tighten the top first, then the sides. Okay. Right now they're all still loose, but yeah, I'll do that right now. Just trying to get everything aligned. Um, Two point four. Oh man, were you were you what were you doing? Were you in the middle of like a conversion process to canvas or something like that, or uh, five volt, five volt? Surprised it killed every driver. Uh, the part, that part has adjustment in it. The important part is that the center vertical extrusion is even with the rear corner extrusions. Gotcha, okay. So I'll tighten it and then measure, I think, right, is the next part of this. Delmar said what? You said tighten top? Tighten top, yeah, that's what you said. Okay, so we are tightening the top. Okay, so uh, it may be easier to align by setting the printer on its back and using your desk to make sure. Oh, that's a good point. Loosen it again, huh? And then use this up against the um, use this up against the uh, quartz. I was trying to install a nozzle camera. I didn't want to take it apart because it was my reliable. Oh my god, that oh, you missed earlier um, earlier zombie the. Uh, the vertical extrusion on this was totally kinked like not at a 40 degree but like i would argue at like a 60 degree angle uh and it was because after last week's stream i decided that i wasn't happy enough with my framing or the squaring of the frame so i was spending some more time on it and ended up screwing things up more the amount of times i have had something that's like yeah it's really good but like i'm gonna add this one more thing and then something's gone just completely wrong is is a lot <laughs> so i definitely can relate to uh to that feeling because it's certainly something I've experienced with many projects. Always just one more thing and then <laughs> I think most of us really in the at least 3 printing. Okay so we want so we're basically checking this then so it's it's spot on it's like spot on 200 millimeters It looks pretty damn close, actually. Uh, first fully, 24 volt, 2.4. Double check that the extrusion is perpendicular to the bottom extrusion. Oops, what am I doing? I'd say there's about a half a millimeter difference. Um, it's at like 200, 200 and some change. So not a full millimeter off. And on the top, it's closer to 200 millimeters. Okay, so it's at it's at an angle then, because it's 200 millimeters here, 200 millimeters here, and then a little bit more on these sides. So it needs to come like it's slightly twisted. Uh, it was a half millimeter difference when you put the extrusion. Oh, it was. Yeah, I think that does sound right when I was doing it initially. Hey, what's up, Ajax? Yeah, so I'm looking like from the top. Oops, you can't see what I'm doing. I just realized that, yep. So from the top, uh, center to corner on this side, we're at 200 and almost one. And right here above the motor, we're at spot on pretty much 200. So there's a one millimeter 
like so it must be slightly twisted like or not just like at a slight angle one millimeter angle you're saying diagonal Crap. let's get my long bar Three eighty six, roughly. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's close. It's. Uh, it's all within a millimeter. Uh, use that new tape. We check in on this. Curious to see too, just. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh. Hey, what's up, Pushin? On another note, I'm excited that uh, for the Tiny T, just finished modeling extrusions for a side pack. Oh, that's so exciting. The side pack's awesome. I, I know that the Trident one is gorgeous. I'm not sure. All right, let me check one last thing here. I don't know if I should adjust it or not. I'm sort of torn. It's a one millimeter difference. I guess here's what I'll do. Let me, let me um, loosen the top printed brackets and shift as needed. Yeah. That's probably the good. Good call. Straight size. Oh, where are you? Where are you? I know you're here somewhere. There you are. Okay. Okay. So, we're trying to get 200. I'm gonna come around the other side really quick. Uh, I just messed the top and bottom distance. Measured the top and bottom distance. Okay. I only tightened one of the bolts because I just want to verify. Okay, so this is 200. Or, yeah, really damn close to 200. This is very close to 200 as well. This is a hair over, but really close. I think I think that's possibly as good as I'm going to get it. Yeah, I think that's as good as I'm gonna get it. Use the blocks on both sides. Well, this is attached with just a single screw, so I'm wondering if I should be. I think that. In reality, I should probably loosen the top because um, the bottom to me seems good now. I'm actually, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to loosen the top.
Uh, if you, if you, you can certainly fix the centering right now if you spend some more time on that blind. Yeah. The, um, I think that this is just a hair off. Well, I think that that's really what is sort of causing the issue. Just curious, let's see. Okay, so that is now right at 200. Okay, so that's right at 200. And this is slightly over 200. Okay, so to get it perfectly centered, it needs to be 200 and some change, like like 200 and a half millimeters. Get a piece of wood to cut, two millimeters, could drop it, and like just turn it off. So we need a hair, just a hair over 200 millimeters to get it centered. Uh, something like that. I'm not sure that that didn't move. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, so that's basically 200, almost 201. Now this side is 200, so it shifted again. It's close, it's very, very close. I'm gonna give it like one more attempt and then I'm probably just gonna settle. Okay, that, I think I got it. I got lucky, uh, I got lucky like Pooch on my trident up right after trying to make things perfect. I know, I know. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. We're, I'm nearly there, but it's just, it's so the step shows to check things. Okay, so it's got 200 and a little bit more. It's got 200, I'm happy with this. I think this is golden. So let me do one last little tighten here, like that. And then spin it around. Oh, Pooja's first try mojo was uncanny. <laughs> Beginner's luck. The more you build, the, the longer it takes. All right. Oh, I'm like, wait, what happened? Okay, I was measuring from the wrong slot. Okay, so that's right about there. This guy is, yeah, I think that's definitely better. I mean, we're talking a millimeter, but, um, but it could make a difference. Or I mean, even a fraction of a millimeter, but it still could make a difference. Uh, I wasn't playing that up. It was spot on. It's crazy. Because you were there. <laughs> it's not fair. Pooch gets a Steve for his build. I guess technically I have a Steve. <laughs> He's here, just not physically. turn there we go boom Ugh. looks good the sides uh the side ones tighten with it back on wait what the side ones tighten with it back on what do you mean oh tighten with it on its back gotcha just to make sure it's flat against the quartz. It was pretty tight, but yeah, you're right. I did do a final turn, which could have shifted it a little bit. I'll loosen them up again. Oh. 
Okay. Gotcha. So yeah, so now it's got play. So if we're gonna, we want it flat up against the, the quartz. got Z extrusion upside down assembly for ease of assembly recommend to flip the printer over okay so this is time to do the um, linear rails I think I'm gonna call it I think I'm gonna call it here I lied I lied we're gonna no 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 because no. I want to want to call the mortgage lady but um we're gonna finish up this last bit here so let's get the the two extrusions in place. Since I pulled out the extrusions, I cleaned them, we should do this. Um, so I guess let's flip it back over. And handle with care. Um, here they are. Okay, so. These, I, all I did was took them and wiped them. Um, I wiped them down really good with rubbing alcohol, like, or not rubbing alcohol, like uh, isopropyl, I think 95%. Um, and then I uh, took the grease that we normally use, which I can't remember what grease this is, but we've used it for all builds for like a really long time. Uh, and there wasn't, there's no like um, hole on the side on these ones. So I went through the back here uh, and just basically squeezed until the grease popped out, then moved it back and forth, and then uh, put a little bit on my finger and just rubbed it around the entire rail. So that's what I did with both of them. Um, okay, so this fits. Oh wow, it's like a perfect fit. Um, we, I also printed out earlier today these little guides. We're gonna need a bunch of T-nuts, aren't we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it looks like eight. Nuts. Uh, so let's do that. And these are going to be M3s. And I don't know if the direction, uh, mostly around, da, 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 da. does it matter the orientation? It looks like it does. So orientation is going to be, um, oh, so four in each direction. Are they all, no, they're not high winds. Only, only the X, um, only the X is high wind. They actually gave you three in this, at least in mine, uh, they gave me three different types of linear rails. So the two that we're installing right now are branded as Cyborg. Uh, they, uh, and then there are three for the Z, uh, the lead scroller, the Z axis that I don't think they had any name on them. Um, you know what, let's also try to help ourselves by uh, putting us here and trying to align these yeah i don't think they had any name on them um the ones for the z and then the x was the the x is high wind so a little variety which is a little odd i guess you know what you're right let's let's not worry about it now let's get them in here and then once they're in here i can slide them and align them quickly uh those are designed in rail stops Those are designed in rail stops. Oh, gotcha. So that way the uh, bearing block doesn't fly off, you're saying. Uh, question about the extra rails or specific formula. Place the alignment jigs as wide apart as possible. Yeah, they, they'll be towards the out, outer sides. Okay. So now that I've got this in place, I can 
sort of move these T-nuts around a little bit. Will these fit like that? Uh, yeah, they will. Wait, this isn't right. Oh, this is also, that's right, different rail, right? So we're gonna need at least, um, I forgot. Because this is, I think the um, manuals for a 250, we're gonna have a couple of additional, let's see. I think we need two additional T-nuts and two additional bolts. Yeah, that adds up. Um, These are a little bit looser than I would like. Mm, I'm not gonna use these. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna pause it here. Um, I'll probably install these Y rails on my own. Uh, this will be the last thing I'll do. I mean, we basically have seen it. All I'm gonna do is tighten things down, but um, I printed these out in PLA and normally they're pretty tight. There's enough room, like, I don't know if you can see it, but there is, too much left and right wiggle room uh, on these printed in PLA. So I'm gonna reprint these in either AB, ABS or ASA, or even possibly, um, even possibly take, if I take the PLA one, I guess I'll scale it down so that way it's a tighter fit. But yeah, there's enough, there's enough slot for them to be able to move left and right right now, which isn't good. Yeah, this is significant, exactly, yeah. If it was just like a little bit, but I'm like, no, 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 I, I see like the, the stops are on the very ends, so that should be constraining them the most and it's still, it's still like, I mean, it's wiggling back and forth. So uh, make some on the laser cutter. <laughs> That's actually not a bad idea. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it here. The last thing again that I was planning on doing was just basically attaching these. So I'll do this and the other one. And then we are gonna be streaming this um, next Wednesday as well. Uh, and then hopefully by then Steve and I will be able to share sort of the plan and, and the starting day for the VZ stream. Um, but yeah, we will at least do one more stream before we take a pause on the Cyborg build. And so next week I would like to do, let's see, Z axis, definitely. Okay, so Z axis is a big part of it, which makes sense. Z and X would be awesome to get done next week. Um, that'll be our target, I think. And I'll do some I'll do some prep if needed as well before that. But today we got at least the um, AB motors. Let me take this rail off before I drop it. We got the AB motors built and mounted. We got our back beam mounted, and we got the AB um, idlers built and mounted as well. So. Uh, and again, I'll get I'll get the rails on so that way by next week we will have that and we'll be moving on to the Z. But it's starting to look like a, like a thing. I mean, <laughs> we've definitely made some progress. <clears throat> Time for some food. No, I uh, probably hold out till dinner after those quesadillas. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the progress you made. Thank you, um, everybody that helped out. Delmar, good job catching the completely... Um, not squared back extrusion. That was pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, I think it was relatively smooth stream today. That was really the only hiccup. Uh, and I think everything else went quite smoothly. So uh, that, we'll, we'll call this a win. We'll say it was a win. So thank you everybody for hanging out, uh, for all the new members, for all the gifted members. There was a ton of uh, gifted memberships today. So thank you to everybody and uh, next week, I'll, I'll get next week's stream scheduled probably tonight or by tomorrow latest. 
Uh, thank you, Steve, for hanging out. It was nice having you in chat and giving some pointers. Uh, let us know next week the plan for the VZ bot. Yeah, we'll do our best. I'm sure. I'm sure that we'll be able to share next week um, the starting point and sort of the scheduling for that. We're both super excited. So, all right, everybody, have a wonderful night or day, depending on where you're at, and I will see you hopefully next week. Cheers. Take care. Everybody.